All right. Call the meeting to order, please. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record uh, that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by uh, the local media. Uh, if you could all please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just uh, on each. I'd like to exercise a point of personal privilege uh, with the uh, acquiescence of my colleagues here and announce that uh, make a little announcement in relation to our chairman, Bob Masseri, who uh, some of you may have known, uh, underwent some uh, very serious surgery uh, this morning. And it's, uh, we're very happy to report that the surgery went well and as expected. And um, we're hoping that uh, Bob uh, will be back home at Sandra, Sandra Drive on, uh, later this week and uh, back meeting with us, uh, hopefully, in the not too distant future. Again, our uh, thoughts and prayers and, uh, with him and his family, and uh, the expectations are looking very favorable. So I'm certainly very happy. Uh, <coughs> that being said, uh, Mr. Crisco, I understand you might be making a motion to appoint uh, Mr. Yule as the acting uh, clerk. So moved. Uh, Chair will second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Congratulations on your lofty. Uh, good, good to win something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first order of business this evening will be uh, to go over some budget uh, budget hearings. Uh, we'll start with the Veterans Conservation Hillview Commission Parks and Recreation uh, Finance Accounting and then Administration. Uh, so, if we want to start it off, this is Magna. Good afternoon, or evening, I should say. How's everybody doing? Fine. Good, thank you. Okay, uh, bear with me, because I, I, this is my first official slideshow presentation, so. <laughs> um, this isn't your first rodeo. Huh? You've been through this before. But No, but I've never put one of these together before. Oh, all right. It's well, my first time. I hope there's a lot of pictures. A lot of I do have a lot of pictures. Pictures but are I, good. What I try to do is actually do, <laughs> try to get to the budget first, and then, you know, whatever afterwards. You know, the, okay, the, well, the mission statement, um, I don't think we need to go through that, but I'm going to go right through the line item detailing for you. That's all right. Um, so I had to, I have an increase on 500 on other supplies. The reason being I'm doing that is because I have a program that I'm, inst I want to institute, um, in fact, for 2018, it's called Graduates to Defenders. And it's actually recognizing our local high school students enlisting to defend our country. The first coin of hopefully many given to the graduating seniors during uh, through ceremony and in front of their family and friends. Um, so what I'm hope what I, my anticipation is is we would have a challenge coin representing every branch of the service, um, and we will incorporate you want Reading into this coin, so they'll know their very first coin came from North Reading. Um, as they graduate, it's also a great way for me to keep track of all our um, guys and girls that are heading into um, the military. Um, I just actually received um, some information on the cost of the coins, and like anything else, you buy it in bulk. The, the more you buy in bulk, the less it is. Um, there is a um, there's two places I'm looking at right now. One of them that's already um, working with Chicopee with this. Chicopee is the only one, the only other town that's doing this actually, and uh, I just thought it was a great, a great thing to add on um, to give to the graduates in a special ceremony. I kind of touched base with uh, uh, Mr. Bernard on it, and uh, she does hers at the gradu at graduation ceremony time, but he was thinking more maybe we do it on award night, um, but that's in the in in the future to discuss a little further, but. This is, this is what I was hoping to be able to accomplish um, for the graduating seniors of uh, North Ray. We'll go back. Okay, on the uh, office supplies, there was an increase for $200 due to the load increase uh, and additional programs that I'm adding. Um, a lot of paper going through, going through a lot of paper uh, needs. Um, subscriptions being an increase of 100 
um, for additional ads to acknowledge um, events and things of that nature going um, going forward uh, for future events for the um, <coughs> honoring our veterans. Uh, what I did was decrease on my on 57100 travel. What I did is I decreased eight, that by 800, which made up for that 500, the 200, and the 100 going into other supplies so I <coughs> to level service that area. Um, the other thing um, was transportation, an increase of $10,000. What we did is de decreased the veterans' benefits by 10000 in adding an additional line item for transportation to be able to in, uh, have either pay somebody to be able to drive veterans as they need in town back in, uh, to their appointments. But there's also another um, that I, I recently was at one of my meetings. There's a new um, uh, obje uh, objective that's out there for, it's, it's kind of like um, Uber, but it's, it's called Q-Ride. And so what they do is they bring in all different um, drivers, you know, different businesses that are interested in getting involved in this Q ride. And it's kind of like the central location, if you will. And so I would actually call Q ride and I would say, hey, I had a veteran that needs a ride to Jamaica Plain. And what they would do is it's almost like a bidding that goes on and then I can choose the, the lowest bidder on it. They're all Corey checked and they all background checked all the drivers. So we kind of alleviate the, uh, any liability on our end as far as the town goes because we would actually be paying somebody on the outside to do this. <clears throat> Just so you understand, veterans that are with the VA, they're allowed, you know, they can get transportation from one VA area to another. But if they choose, and I have a few of them that choose because they've had their regular uh, primary care physicians, say at the Leahy Clinic, they can't go to the Leahy Clinic via a van through the VA, unless the VA has approved it. So it has to be an approval from the VA in order for them to get that transportation, otherwise they're on their own. So I have three in town that are actually wheelchair bound, they're not under chapter 115, so it's out of pocket expenses, so this was another way to assist them, since we don't have things like the ride or any other uh, other types of transportation to get them back and forth. Um, it'll also help alleviate the needs on my end, um, on, on my end, because I'm doing a lot of driving back and forth to the VA too, with the veterans. Mr. Yule? Yes, thank you. Um, uh, just a couple things. Do they get reimbursed for the expense on the, uh, on the Q, quote, the Q ride? Would they get, re would the individual get reimbursed? Yeah. Well, they no, don't pay the, anything out of their pockets coming out of, all, out of your budget. This would come out of here. Okay. <clears throat> right. So these are people that, they, you know, they, they, like I uh, had somebody get a wheelchair van, for instance, to the Mass General, it was $500 round trip. $500 round trip. And it's $89 through Uber from, from here to the VA in Bedford, just so you know. Now, with Chapter 115, if they and need of those doctor's appointments, just so you know, Chapter 115, the state will reimburse us back the 75% of that. Of the 500? If, it, if it's a veteran under Chapter 115, right. yes. Right. Yes. Obviously, if not, then... then Correct. Then we'll Correct. Not. So uh, this, this would actually help everybody in town, uh, you know, all the veterans in town. So if we have some that are not on Chapter 150, and I've, I've gotten calls, Hey, I, you know, I, I need a ride to Mass General, or my husband does. He's in a wheelchair. I can't get him there. Um, this would kind of help alleviate some of that. So, a portion of it would not. Some some of these would not be reimbursable. And for those that have, like, as you the example you pointed out, as far as the primary being in Leahy, not coming through the veterans, we could provide transportation for them, but that wouldn't be subject to the seventy-five percent reimbursement. Correct. Okay. Correct. It's just another alternative. We're trying to find another alternative that would kind of ease up my end of it because I, I am taking a lot of them, you know, not so much the wheelchair-bound ones, but I'm, even regular appointments. I'm taking people back and forth up there, and it's... Mr. Chair, I 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I want to make sure I understand. You're decreasing your transmit, uh, your benefits to the veterans, and then you're going to move it over to transportation. Is that what I understood? Correct. Correct. And, and yes. And what we'll do is we'll actually treat that line item the same as we do with the veterans benefits. That line item is specifically to transportation only. <laughs> It doesn't go into anything. It can't be taken out for anything, anything else. Just as we do with the, the regular veterans benefits. With so what happens to the benefits, I guess? Right now, I'm, I'm, right now I'm okay on the benefits end. So I, think I, I, I was able to go through the financials on the, on the, benefit, on the benefits for the veterans and I'm doing okay. So right now I have, without considering scripts or any outstanding <coughs> things that I'm unaware of, right now, I'm, uh, I think I'm lo looking at about seventy-six thousand right now, to the end of the for the end of the year, fiscal year. It's got to be outstanding. I think I need to sit down with you between now and when you approve the budget to try to let's talk about that. It, I don't like seeing red in the veterans. Oh no no no. <laughs> oh okay. So you didn't want to see red in the decrease, I mean, Okay, gotcha. Mr. Just speaking with the decrease of the ten thousand dollars and adding it to the transportation line item, um, Sue is running a surplus in veterans benefits this year. So as well as last year, she turned back about eighty thousand dollars in veterans benefits. So we're not cutting veterans benefits. We're not cutting services or anything like that. It has to do with the caseload, the current caseload that she has, um, and. I believe we've talked to the finance committee about this and they feel comfortable. I mean, we're not in the situation where we were probably four or five years ago right. where okay. we were running very low mm. on veterans benefits and we had to go to the finance committee for a reserve fund transfer. Right. Right. Um, we have made sure that the veterans benefit budget is, is fully funded. So we're not cutting services by any means. Um, you know, she feels comfortable with this, with even adding additional caseload, we would still be okay with this budget amount. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> any other questions on uh, this particular area of transportation? Mr. Crisco? Yes. I called you on this, I mean, you may not recall this, but last year, for years, I've been in town now over 13 years, and every year I get called from AM Vets, Marine Corps, North Reading Vets, the Vets, 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 mm -hmm. and we donated to all of them. Right. So when you started talking to me about this transportation issue, I started calling all these people that I've donated money to, and probably all of you guys have donated money to. When they call you, they tell you, this is for the North <laughs> Reading Veterans. Mm -hmm. And so I called all these places to say, hey, we have a transportation problem. I said, can you tell me how many of the, our North Reading residents you've transported over the last five years? Zero. Zero. So I only bring it out as a public announcement at this point because my family and I donate a lot of money to these organizations for the North Reading resident veterans, and we're not getting any of that money. But the AM Vets is still out there, and I'm not sure if you've reached out to them. The AM Vets? Yeah, AMBETS. Yes. Yeah. Well, the thing is, see, again, all that is typically run under what we would consider volunteer. <coughs> so, you know, you get people that come in last minute, I need an appointment, whatnot, or even if they give me a week or whatever, I get, I can call somebody, yeah, I can do it, and then all of a sudden it's, no, I can't, you know, little Johnny, you know, has got a school play or whatever, or, you know, I have an opportunity to go play golf. When they're getting paid, they're going to be there for the job. No, no, I understand. You know, you know what I mean. So, it was just it, it's not that we wouldn't use. I'm not going to consider still using those yeah. areas first, but it's an alternative to have at least that cushion there. That if I'm in that situation, I can use it, call these people, and say, "Hey, I need to get this person out." It would it wouldn't be a, a, the automatic spot that I go through. You know what I mean? It's just a cushion there, and I would absolutely contact the VA in Bedford, you know, if they have any there, anybody available, anybody local that's available, those are, those are the first places I'd be calling, then I would go to use this. As a, you have your own fund. You have your own fund that people can donate money to. Yes, yes. And actually I've had people do that, I've already had people doing that already. So. That could, okay. Yeah. 
Thank you. Any other questions? Just, Abby? Oh, um, I have two questions. You need the microphone. Um, one is, can you, so the coins are going to be given to a high school graduate at some point in the spring of the senior year, assuming that he is enlisting? Not assuming. For every kid? No. Those are the, those are the, will be going into the military. They're going to be signing on the dotted line with their recruiter. They're going to need to show me their paperwork in order to receive a coin. All right. So then, um, how many coins do you get for five hundred dollars? I'm working on that. Like I said, I just got all this information just brought back to me from Chicopee. So I know she pays. Well, first of all, you're going to want five coins. You're going to want every branch because you're going to have to have them made up and ready to go. So. She ended up doing a hundred coins of each, but Chicopee's got a lot of, of each, a, a lot of people, <laughs> you know, a lot of military over there. So, so each branch she got five hundred coins is what she did. So her, after all the expenditures of that, and ordering and designing up some um, uh, recognition. Um, her, the recognition, getting the getting the uh, the folders for them and all that kind of stuff. It was a little over two thousand for that. But I also I'm also working with my guy down in North Carolina that's done all my stuff. So I'm waiting to hear back from them too. And um, the transportation, uh, we're not required to provide transportation to private doctors in Portland, are we? I'm not suggesting you don't. I'm just asking if we're required. We're not mandated to do it. But like every town that goes through the situation that doesn't have anybody, the veteran service officers are usually taking them to where they're going to go. If they can't find, if they cannot find somebody, take them. Just double check. I have quite a few that, that have no families at all, nobody. And you know, I'm not going to leave somebody and have the um, have that liability on me of somebody dying on me. <laughs> right. Out of the job. It's a moral mandate that is <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's probably the best way to put it. <laughs> it's the, it's the oh, yep. Are they dated or can they be kept for, for year to year? They'll be year to year. There'll be no date on them. Okay. I, w I want them generic so that that way they're used every year. Because I could have 21 year and I could have 50 the following year. Yeah. yeah. Great. We're start. We're starting to get. It's always good to start good things. Time for, they need to get recognized. They get recognized with scholarships to go to college. Why not get recognized to go in the military? Simple well, coin. The coining coining is a tradition. That it is in the military for hundreds of years. Right? Okay. You can vote against it. It's okay. It's your moral <laughs> right. I just have a question to guess more to uh, Liz, I guess. As far as uh, if we were to provide transportation specifically, other than loaning out our department had to give someone a ride here, you know, out of her goodness of her heart, which I'm concerned about, I don't think we should necessarily be doing that. Could we not just include this appropriation within the veterans' benefits and have transportation as part of that, rather than culling it out? No, I, I, you can't because the reason being is because it, it would it would actually be it, it's at that line item would actually work for more the ones that are not on chapter one fifteen mm -hmm. is what it be so it's a it's a veteran benefit that's not state reimbursed. That makes sense. No, no, I, you know it would make sense to me, but whether it's reimbursed or not, it's still a benefit that we're providing, uh, and maybe from accounting purposes, it might be easier for you. I'm just concerned about pigeonholing an appropriation unnecessarily and not allowing us a flexibility of if there's a greater need than ten thousand dollars we wouldn't have to go for an, an appropriation an additional appropriation or a transfer or to town meeting to transfer into this specific line item if we can leave it in the benefits you know in uh, from a administrative standpoint informing the board and the finance committee that we're appropriating approximately ten thousand dollars within this for this particular benefit 
uh, will never necessarily run short at this particular juncture. The only we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't run short overall. The way that the I know. budget is voted, it's voted bottom. Her expense budget is voted bottom bottom line. It still is bottom line. Yes. Okay. So it doesn't make a difference. But Sue only spends veterans benefits that line item on veterans benefits. She doesn't, you know, if reimbursable she type reimbursable. Right. Exactly. Benefit. Correct. She doesn't, um, you know, if she needs $500 more for office supplies, she doesn't eat into that veterans benefit line. She does strictly just use it for that. But if we ran into a situation where she only used $5,000 of her transportation line item and she needed $4,500 to bring her to the rest of the year for to pay out veterans benefits, she could use that $4,500. For uh, I'm, I'm more concerned about it conversely, whereas if we exhaust the transportation appropriation mm -hmm. and need $2,500 more, do we have that same flexibility? Technically, yes, we do. We do, Tec but she does not use her budget that way. I know, um, but, but would we yes, be able to, yes. would, would you be able to yes. use that budget that way? Absolutely. Oh, without okay. having a transfer. Without having the transfer. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, that's all I want to make right. sure. She could, she because could I can see this becoming something that's uh, very useful and uh, more people would take advantage mm -hmm. of it, and justifiably so, and I'm okay with that. It's just I don't want to mm -hmm. see us uh, uh, limiting ourselves right. from an appropriation standpoint, from no. just a bookkeeping no, we, nuance. We can do to a line item transfer without town, town meeting approval the way that the motion is read at town meeting. Okay, budget, I'm good. So. And honestly, I feel better with being separated as an accounting because it's not going to be touched by, it's never going to be a reimbursable from the state because I would have to go to the other line item to get a reimbursement if somebody was on Chapter 150. No, but I, I know you're and running I prefer it, to keep it separate I know, because you're otherwise you're just running I'll, it a surplus now and it, if yeah. this takes off and it uh, takes hold, that's a wonderful thing. I just don't want to see it uh, limiting people, you know, come April. Right. Uh, just right. because of a, a silly bookkeeping uh, situation. So if we could be assured that that could be taken care of, that's good. Any other questions in relation to it? Good. This is Major Pelly. You probably already started started out with this, but I missed it, and I'm sorry. How many veterans do you serve right now? <laughs> well, on Chapter 115, I have 35. Um, I have right now, oh, God. I've got probably 45, if not more, caseloads of aid and attendance, comp cases. I just did another five this past week for intent to files. That's where I'm trying to do, uh, that's where we do a lot. Um, the chapter 115 is just financially based. Um, <clears throat> um, I put four already in from that were homeless. I'm working on another one. Um, put it, got, in, got, in, got them into um, apartments and stuff, so they're off the streets. Um, I'm working on one right now that's in the uh, on a suicide on a suicidal end of it. But uh, in general, I, I, I can't even put a, I can't even put a penny in my file folders right file drawers right now. That's how packed I am. I was just curious how many active. It's and I'm sure it always. It, 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 you it's know what, it's, a, it's a hard number to give yeah. you because um, like the intent to files, I'm st I've been keeping it running because that's something new that they started. Mm -hmm. So the intent to file, what it is, is actually saying, I plan on fi filing for a disability or aid in attendance or whatever it is. I, I'm planning on filing it. So we send that into the system and then we, what, what happens is um, it gives them a year to get all their documents together and for me to get their caseload together um, and before it, 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 it saves the date for them so they're retro from the from so, the federal so line. So it sounds like you had 30, 35 in one category, another 45 plus in another, so you're 80, between 80 and 100 yeah. veterans at this yeah. particular point? And that's not counting the ones that you get off the wall calls, yeah. like you know, the, the nursing homes and I'm working on ones over there, I've got two over there right now. and. Um, Mr. Yule? Yes, uh, thank you. How long have you been doing this for with the town? For the town? Yeah. Seven years. Seven years. When you took over, has the caseload increased since you took over? Dramatically. Like 
It was six. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, over the years, I've probably handled about 100 cases for Chapter 115, but managed to get them off because I got them jobs. Right. Or got them, you know, or they moved or, you know, lost some, you know, somebody passed away, but um, I keep all, you know, all the right, running right. back backlog of everything there. Um, that was just Chapter 115. But, but there have been a lot of veterans in the background that never really came forward until you began to take over and to to let them know, reach out. We did a lot of reach out, haven't you? Well, that's the reason why. You get to do the, the outreach is, is important. That's what they, they want us to do. And it's not so much outreaching. <clears throat> I know there's a lot of towns and cities get a little nervous with outreach in, in some ways because they're in fear of how the much budget. the budget's going right, to explode. Right. <clears throat> but at some point it levels, it levels. But it's more than that. It's, it's so much out there as far as the compensations, the being there for the ones that are, you know, dealing with the opioids, you know, the addictions. And we've got a lot of that going on. The, you know, the suicide watches. I, I, my son just lost two within the month. Um, and that's just in my family alone. So, um, and then the A&A &A, A &A cases. So you get people that are in assisted living that can use assistance so that they qualify for the aid and attendance, which is a pension that helps them out um, to get additional services in their home. Um, and it's that just what we try to do. We try to keep the, we try to keep them as much as we can in their home, so they're able to, um, you know, live out their live, their lives live there. Life. I mean, I just I have another couple that's going through the same thing. She's got dementia. She's uh, dealing with dementia, and he's dealing with paralysis and that. And they've got neither one of them can drive. Well, yeah. I think I think what I what I wanted to get to is right now, and this is a budget. We're talking dollars and cents. We're talking numbers, which sometimes to some people doesn't equate to people. <laughs> but I think with what you have done uh, for the past seven years, um, it is really commendable and should be acknowledged uh, for the efforts that, that you have uh, put forth in identifying veterans that need services, bringing them out of the shadows, um, uh, driving them to where to to appointments that that they've had to do and you know all at the goodness of your heart and and that's not dollars and cents so uh, i you know if anybody's watching here I, I want them to understand that the the work that you've done has been significant impactful uh immeasurable so you know appreciate I, that just want to thank you thank you thank you sir. any other questions on uh, veterans no thank you Okay, so the last the last line item <coughs> that I'm looking at an increase. This just came to us um, while we were at the October conference. There's only a couple of um, towns right now working with it. It's um, called Vetrospec. It's a an annual license of 450. But what Vetrospec does? Okay, so it's a it's it's um, a web based program, and this works on the federal end. So we have the state end um, right now, the web, web business, but this is Vectorspec, which is a web, ba ba bleh, excuse me, web based veterans management solution. What this does, it allows me, for, uh, I'll give you a perfect example. I go to somebody's home, I was just the other day. I was in somebody's home, the two of them couldn't, couldn't drive, so I had to go over there, get all their information, I have to come back here, type it all up, go back to them, get signatures, and come back and put it through the system. Okay, so it's quite a few steps. With the web, with the Vetrospect, I can physically take this with me, my laptop, and I can go over there, do all the documents, have them sign it electronically, and upload it, come back to the office. Boom, done, one shot. So it works with claims management. It's, it, they have data tracking, recovery tracking. It's all encrypted emailing. Um, it, it allows me to go in. So <clears throat> and on, on the other end, when, I fi when you file a, um, a compensation claim and I've got somebody coming in, hey, do you know what's going on with my comp claim? I can't find out anything. Um, so I have to contact either Rhode Island, wherever the case is at, or I got to contact Boston where the case is at. And I'll say, hey, can you give me an idea of what's going on with this case, blah, blah, blah. 
da 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 da. Anything that I put in the system, I'm gonna have the ability to see everything in the system. So I can tell that person on the spot, this is where the status is, this is what they're doing, this is what they're working on on the claim. So it, it has everything, spell check, it's, it's all electronic signatures, it's all technical support. I, I got a chance to actually look at it. It's, aw it's so awesome to watch what, I mean, the capabilities this thing has. The license has an annual fee right now currently at $399 for the year. Um, because we're just getting introduced to it uh, through the Department of Veterans Services and there's a few of us that were really interested in it, me being one of them. Um, they have opted to purchase 20 licenses and from what I understand they're going up, they were looking, the last I heard was they were doing, the last email was like 34 licenses for anybody that was interested in it. So we're number one on the list. So what's happening is they're going to pay for the first year for us. Um, so it'll run April to April, and that's why it's on for the FY18 budget. Um, come FY18, it's going up to the 450. Um, but it's given us, a, given me a full year of no cost to us to be able to really see how this thing pans out and works out. Um, and then the signature pad, which I kind of briefed with um, IT as well as Liz on it. Um, the only thing I'm checking, I need to check with them if, if a universal signature pad can be used or do I have to use that particular one, which that one is $1,000 for one time cost on that. But uh, like I said, at this, when I was doing this slide and I just got it, I apologize, I didn't upgrade it. Um, they were telling me 20 licenses, but um, we're number one on the list to get a license for it. Good. And so that's why the 450 for that, for that annually. Abby? Excuse me? You don't have $1,000 in the budget to get the signature no, pad? No, um, we had kind of discussed that because um, IT was noting that they probably could do it within the, what this year's budget is, as it is. So, and I want to do a double check with them because if I can get something less expensive, I'd rather do that. <laughs> and I'm sure you would. But uh, I don't know if it's mandated, if that particular, I, I would yeah, imagine right. most of them are probably universal at, at this point, you know, because I'm even thinking if I can, if my web business has the ability to do that, then I can go, when I'm doing chapter 150, and I can do the same thing, go to somebody's home and have the same thing being done there, all, all electronically. Thank you. Any, any other <laughs> questions on veterans? All right, Susan, thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. You're thank welcome. you, Susan. <coughs> Conservation. Mr. Chairman, I do not see anybody in the audience here on behalf of the Conservation Commission. I would note for the board that there uh, was one change and it's tied to an employee's movement on the step schedule and recently settled collective bargaining, as I understand it, for the staff in the Conservation Commission. That's the only change. That's the only change. Okay. Very good. All right. Hillview. Mr. Hemming, have a seat right next to Liz. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mr. Hemming, treasurer of the uh, Hillview Commission. Here you go, sir. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to present our uh, 2018 budget. Uh, as you can see from our budget, it is uh, an overall increase of 2.5%. That is divided up into really two different pieces. Uh, one is a contractual increase in the management fees of the golf course. Uh, so those costs are going up. And <coughs> being offset by the reduction in debt service as some of the bonds are, are finally rolling off. So overall, we're looking at about a 2.5% increase in the budget for next year. As far as additional revenues anticipated, uh, we're increasing? So we are uh, increasing. We did increase the rates uh, if we ever get out to play golf again. Um, <laughs> we did increase the rates for the, uh, both the greens fees and the car fees, uh, a dollar. So there will be some incremental <coughs> revenue. Um, however, Given the weather, 
and given uh, actually the weather we had in the fall, we're kind of running a little behind. Um, but we continue to manage our expenses to make sure that uh, we the revenue. And then, uh, and it, uh, I'll just jump in a little bit. Just as, as far as an anticipation of a, a need to uh, further negotiate the contract with the uh, people who are subletting the function facility, uh, since there was a lost yeah. year of revenue for the pub. Yeah. So we've had entered into discussions with the tenant, um, and we've agreed to defer the payment of rent from April 1st to June 1st. So it doesn't it doesn't affect the 2018 budget. It will affect this year's budget, but we're comfortable in making up that spending. As far as weather forecast and drought, how are we doing? Uh, we're, in, <laughs> we're in a little bit of trouble now. I will tell you that the, um, the facility is open, the, the pub. So I don't know if anybody has driven by, but I assume, you know, given the outcry when it closed that the town will be and the townspeople will be supporting it immensely going forward <laughs> and breakfast Bre uh, no breakfast yet yeah okay yeah. but uh, he is running a bunch of specials uh, I think there's a trivia night on Tuesday so he's doing a lot of advertising and uh, <coughs> spent a, a tremendous amount of his own money in renovating the facility and there, good. there are the significant improvements down in the pub area as far as uh, uh, the decor, uh, yeah. the kitchen, <laughs> the, the kitchen that finally got completed, the, the, famous, kitchen, the yes. famous kitchen, and um, again we wish uh, Mr. Yeba much success because we get to share in that success. Yes, so, uh, Mr. Yule, it, just a quick question. The first of all, the place looks fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's night and day now uh, with the way it has looked and the way it looks now. So. Uh, that's really good. I just want to make sure that I understand that the uh, deferment of the uh, rental payment from April to June. So, are you saying that April, May, and April June and May. there will be no? Uh, oh, April and May. April and May. April and May. Okay. So there will be uh, no payment of rent <coughs> by the uh, um, tenant. 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 Correct. Okay. And 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 the and the reason. The reason that? being is that it's the, unfortunately the construction and the construction of the of the kitchen took a, a significant amount of time longer than expected. So he had expected to open up actually last year. Right. He was unable to do that. Right. So he lost the full golf season. So we felt it was fair for him to at least give him a couple months of rent free to enable him to get the people in and to start generating some business. Well, he's been very cooperative, right? He's been very cooperative. Um, the the four thousand dollars it's costing us he's more than put in himself. And and regarding the debt services, um, when does the football field come off that? It was not a ten, a ten, ten year. It was a ten year thing, right? So yeah. what year are we in now? Do we know we're about like in, uh, six third, only third or fourth like year? That. Seems like a long time ago. I'm sorry? Yeah, so. Right, so so we should have this is five years or something. Yeah. Four or five years? A little less? You think? It's less. It's less. Yeah, if it's nine, I gotta use my fingers, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, there was some temporary financing for a while, and then it wasn't permanently well, bonded. we had a ban, right, yeah. I believe, right. Is that is that the biggest one? That's the biggest one. So that will be, uh, that'll be nice mm -hmm. when that happens. And Don't start you. spending yet. No. Everything is there other people always about all sorts spending, of ideas. it seems. <laughs> all sorts of ideas. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. And then the, uh, should be the, the lease on the carts are up this year? The lead, uh, next year, the lease on the carts are up. And With, the, within this budget? Within this budget. And also the uh, GFMI, the, there's a, we'll be putting out an RFP for them as well. It's the people that are running the golf course. So their uh, schedule is up in the next 12 to 18 months. Okay. Mr. Prisco. So in last year's budget, you had a serious capital investment in the water system. The irrigation system yep and did we end up completing the entire course or did you end up just doing a partial 
No, we did the entire the entire 18 holes. So we're, you're good. No more capital investment on that. Just going to be maintenance. Not from the irrigation system. We do have to do some work on the wells. On the wells. Yeah. What kind of work? Um, some of the last year during August, one of the wells actually stopped pumping. Oh boy. Which was a problem. Uh, fortunately, we were able to get it back up and running. So we probably need to um, redig one of the wells right in the kind of in the same footprint where it is today. We think. So that thirty thousand dollars that you reference in your budget is that going towards that? So we have that for. Uh, a capital equipment, <coughs> golf course, lawn mowers, particularly. Or when you look at the age of the uh, equipment in the golf course, it's mm. significantly older than we might be. <coughs> so we're we're now starting in a now that we can see kind of the debt service going down a little bit. We're starting to invest more in some of the equipment in the golf course. So where's the money for the wells? <coughs> It, it's part of the capital. We have it is 65 in the capital plan, I think it is. Uh, okay. I missed that. Yeah, we have 65. Yeah, okay. I don't know why. But yeah. The Got increase it. is 30000 yeah. over last year. Um, and I also just wanted to back up to the debt service for the turf field. Uh, we borrowed for that in September of 2010. The debt service does not end until 2024. So it was 15. Oh, so it was a 15. 15 yeah. I thought it was 10, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Mr. Yule. Uh, thank you. Uh, speaking of wells, uh, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe I should have a better grasp on this. These are your wells, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. Is, you know, with us moving over to MWRA, is there any way that we you can latch on to the wells that we have now? For water, um, the, I mean, because you're saying you're yeah. using your own private wells technically right. for the water, the wells on the farm. right? So, is there a way to? Uh, I wonder if there's a way, and I guess I'm just speaking out loud yeah. at this point. The wells that are going to be closed because we're hooking on to uh, MWRA would be available water for you to use, if not MWRA. Uh, you would get it there. Depends on where it is and how much it costs to pipe it. Again, we are limited in how much water we can draw for the golf course. So, you know, regardless, by, by regulation, by regulation, there's a certain, okay. yeah, there's a certain amount. It's, it's roughly 100,000 gallons a day. Um, so, you know, so we're we haven't run into a situation where we haven't been able to get the 100,000 a day. Right. No problem with anything. We've been moving in numbers around a little bit, but um, so we're regulated by that. So even if there's all this extra water, by regulation, we can't use it. So to use those mm -hmm. wells, Mr. Yule, we would have to make a significant capital investment to continue those to operate at a level they're at today. Well, I, un I understand so that. Yeah, that's a good point. It's I one mean, of the reasons why we're standpoint. making this move to MWRA yeah. is because of that. Yeah. yeah, but from a proximity standpoint, there's a Central Street location for the wells, but right. which is just up the street from Hillview. But Again, significant and infrastructure would have to be invested to awesome. to do it, and awesome. we're not having a problem since we're sitting over an aquifer uh, finding yeah. water. Okay. Okay. Water. Yeah. Okay. So there isn't a need to pipe it in. Right. right. It's just you're restricted on how much you can. We're restricted on which. Just yeah. thinking out the box. <laughs> have you ever thought about going in for requesting an increase? Yes, we have. We're hoping with uh, maybe as as the town starts going to the end of the URA, maybe we get a little bit. Of Should relief. be. Um, we're gonna have a significant availability off the drain right. of the Ipswich River. So hopefully that will give you some justification. Yeah, we would, we would love to have an increase. Um, I think it would certainly help the golf course. It would certainly help us maintain that investment, yes, it no would. doubt. Okay, and then as far as a GFMI contract uh, that expires when? Um, is, is, is it a I calendar mean, year? Or is it, it a they are, they're calendar year? The calendar yeah, year, so it's probably into the next, next fiscal year, rather than this fiscal year. Right. Okay. So we're starting the process. Right. We'll see. So as far as budgeting for anything, that's not necessary yet. It's not necessary. Okay. And hopefully we get the bidding done so we would know how to budget for the following fiscal yep. year. Yep. yep. We're in okay. The process. Okay. The warrant article too. Oh. oh. Through you, through you, Mr. Chairman, my understanding is the Commission is interested in seeking from town meeting the uh, authority to let out a contract for up to five years for the management oh. of the course. With Mr. Yeba. Of course, um, or with the uh, 
No, the functional. The golf course management. Golf course management. Yeah, that the we have a meeting Wednesday. There's discussions going on about that. Okay. No, no, no final decision. No final decision. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So we may need a placeholder, but we may need a placeholder. Um, you know, the GM FMI has done a very good job over the last 15, 20 years. Last couple of years, we've had some issues. The, the so, yeah, so just to, for the other board members' uh, information, there may be a warrant article requested on behalf of the Hillview to allow for uh, an extension of time in the contracting of services from three to, right, five, yeah. from three to five years. Uh, that's five. Uh, three to five years. <laughs> uh, but we'll await their request. Is that um, just a one-time or option to renew at the same number of years? It's an up to and it was with an five option. And five, and five. five and five. Yeah, right now we're three and three, so there's been discussions about whether or not we would get. We we get very few people bidding when we put it out for the RFP. So one one discussion item is, you know, if we went five and five, would we get someone else interested, other people interested, because it's a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. to, Any other questions <coughs> in regard to Hillview? Yeah. Yeah, Peter. Uh, yeah. Can you remind me where we're at in that uh, agreement to um, delay payment in lieu of taxes for that water infrastructure project? Um, we're on year four, three or four. Yeah. Four. Yeah, we're on year four of the of the four year that was requested. Thank you. So don't anticipate any payment in lieu of taxes for this year. No. FY19, it's on Wait. Liz's radar. Uh, <laughs> any other questions for Peter? No? Peter, thank you very much. And okay, thank again, you. Uh, best to uh, the commission, and thanks for their work. Right. Parks and Recreation. Stevens, Operations Director for the Parks and Recreation Budget for fiscal year 2018. This is who we are. We have three directors, the operations, charge of the money, parks in charge of the parks, and recreation in charge of the recreation. And we have, those are um, funded with the subsidy that we've been uh, given by the town. Um, people below that, the secretary, parks foreman, programmer, special heavy equipment operator are not funded in that subsidy. They're, they're funded by uh, the enterprise account with the exception of the parks foreman who is um, with the DPW budget. Um, recreation has, uh, is quite a busy place. We have 2,013 member accounts in our system. It's um, a lot of accounts that we take care of, and those are all separate accounts with many different family members in there. Um, last year, we took in 4,537 4, in registrations, of which 4,154 were residents and 383 were non-residents. We were up 44% from the prior year. Um, this last year, we audited, uh, offered 86 programs offered from age zero all the way through 99. Um, we do morning, afternoon, evening, weekdays, weekends. Um, our summer is our biggest time. That's where generally most of our revenue will, will come from. Um, one of the biggest programs we have in the summer is the Summer Skate Program. And um, it is a full day program, Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And last year we had 291 children in it. 
and we that office field trips and many things during during the day they walk to Ipswich River Park um, they take the field trips they have all types of uh, theme days and last year it was at the batch very successful that's ages grades one and up uh, our kid connection program that runs four days a week nine to one we had 62 children in that um, that runs um, for preschoolers so basically ages three to five we'll say some of them are almost three and some of them are a little over five but for the most part that's the general consensus of what the kid connection same thing that's run at the recreation center um, and a very successful program as well we also offered last year 29 clinics and programs in the summer and that ran from everything basketball volleyball field hockey soccer um, just any, anything cheerleading science everything that we ran there was something going every single week for a parent to sign up the child before we offer trips uh, day overnight and week and we're going to Nashville this year we're going we're going to a lot of places this year not that we go we send uh, everybody else off and we offer uh, many 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 discount tickets for the community to um, take advantage of the discounts there's some of our summer escape kids from 2016 posing for you um, they had a great year and they loved it it's a, it's a really great pro program. Parks and field maintenance, the permits and scheduling. We did 6,600 hours of scheduling and 315 permits. We were up 30% on the permits. We mow about 93 acres. Last year, the special projects were Chestnut Street soccer field. We removed the softball field. It's been converted into an all soccer field complex. Um, that was done by the parks crew. Um, and some of the DPW helped out on that. Uh, we have now have at the high school the new softball and multi-purpose fields at the high school, which Marty Tilton was a um, member of that group who really pushed it forward to get all the donations so that, that uh, those fields could get built and funded. Um, Benevento improvements through the state grant um, due to their state champion uh, chip celebration that's gonna be happening this year at the Benevento. A lot of improvements have been made. The Parks Director has um, been there at every step of the way to see what's going on. And it's been a, um, it's been a, big, a big deal over there. So that's gonna be a really um, uh, a, a nice, ju you know, nice summer over there. They're gonna see tons of improvements. So these are the parks we do. Um, you must all know them. Ben Benvento Park with the Little League fields. There are concession stands, batting cages, Chestnut Street. Um, the softball field's no longer there, even though it shows it's there. That's a mistake. But, um, and then Clark Park, we have uh, the boat dock, the sand volleyball court, basketball court, the whole bit. Um, and that's used, that's actually rented quite a bit, Clark Park. And here we are at Ipswich River Park, which was awarded by Reading Magazine as the best scenic place for 2017. So nice. I'm very proud of that. Um, and it's also rated five stars by Google reviews. So we get a lot of reviews coming to us that um, people that go to it, they can rate it on Google and it's rated five stars out of five. So that's a um, nice thing to see. I'm proud of that too. Um, just to mention something about Ipswich River Park, it is hitting its 20th year of opening this year. Um, in the anniversary celebration that we're going to be announcing, whoops, is going to be on Wednesday, June 21st, 2017. And so far, our plans are petting zoos, music, barbecue, raffles, and more. And you're gonna, we're going to have some fun stuff going back uh, to 1997. And there's going to be a lot of invitations going out to all those who were involved in the opening of it in 1997. So look for your invites on that once we get past this. Once we got past the wine and food, we're going to be jumping in on this. So um, the Ipswich River Park, it has many things, as you can see, the rec center. Um, parks facilities, soccer fields, Little League fields, and the list goes on. We all know that that uh, park has everything that one could ask and more. Um, the Rita J. Mullen field, very widely used for men's softball, flag football, field hockey, all kinds of things. It's a multi-purpose field. Um, town hall field, same thing. It's just done by youth softball club, softball field, PB soccer, after school gym clubs by us. Again, another field. North Parish Park is just basically a, a small playground with some flowers and plantings of flagpole picnic area. And Park Street has its lonely little basketball court. It's a nice picture of the Arthur J. Tinney, uh, Kinney Turf Field, which was given to us. 
Um, and then we know the turf field has all the bleachers and um, all the good things that go along with that. Community, we do this and more for the community, um, helping them out with whatever they need, whether it's um, uh, tables or they need volunteers or whatever they need, they need to use a park where they're usually there to help them out, or whether it's some type of uh, sound system or anything, it would be, we're usually there to help them. It's a picture from the, the line at the, the food for the barbecue series 2016. The lines were long, but we got them through it. It was a very successful one last year. Again, how we get the word out, we have our online registration. We have the town website. Ipswich River Park has its own website. We have our Facebook. We do email blasts. We have brochures, uh, three editions. That is, the cost is fully sponsored by um, advertising. That Maria Brown is uh, the one that gets all our advertising. We do the banner program. We advertise our events and programs within the banners at key locations. And obviously the town hall office here which is fully staffed every day. And then we get to the meat of the matter. We get to our budget. So basically our budget is an enterprise budget and we <coughs> are um, basically we have some increases in our costs, but for the town we're looking to level line our subsidy request for um, the three positions. So we're gonna level that to the same as we were, which is going to be, I'm just going to jump to it and I'll jump back. The salaries for the director is 211 We're going to level that to uh, fiscal year 17. Um, if there's anything that's needed, we'll take it out of our own funding if it goes above that. I budgeted higher than that in my budget, but um, to level it to 211 we've done that. And to do that, uh, line items will come across this way, the salaries, personnel benefits, administrative, um, parks, utilities, and recreation, and, and what have you. So it comes down that we're asking the town for the same amount of money in fiscal year 17 um, for the subsidy. And we have had our own increases, and we've had a lot of decreases. We're not paying for our health insurance. We don't have it budgeted this year because everyone that needed it is no longer on our rolls. We've had some changes in our um, personnel. Um, which brought our personnel down. Um, people have moved up and new people have come in. They're in a junior p position. And the same thing's gonna happen in our office. Our, we have not hired a programmer quite yet, but they will come in under uh, the cost of a tenured programmer who has left. So um, our costs have gone down in that regard. Uh, we are expecting to use a little bit of retained earnings because um, our capital, we're looking to um, Let's see if I can get to that. Our capital, we're looking to purchase two items. Um, they are gonna be a new mower and a blower for the parks department. And that will come in um, at the amount of, let's see, this thing is capital, 25,702. So that need for retained earnings is to help us balance that budget to get to that point. So, um, I don't know what questions you would have within the body of this. This is all our detail of um, electricity, heat, the maintenance, park supplies, and what have you. There's a lot of that going on in there. And then we also have, this is our personnel schedule where we have all our personnel listed. This is where the 463 comes in. This is our seasonal staff, concession staffs, recreation <coughs> program staffs, permanent staff. Is all detailed in there and factored. And um, again, we're back to that. So our salary is at a four sixty three seven fifty five. Maureen, in relation to um, retained earnings, what's the retained earnings amount in the enterprise now? The retained earnings is um, that's kind of small. I can't see it right now. We have one hundred ninety one thousand. The number is low, small, or the no? I would love to. <laughs> it's big. The printing is small. Oh, yeah. The amount is big. So the retained earnings right now is 191804 <coughs> um, It is an increase lot over last year of $64,000. So that's what it is or as of June 30th. That's what it was certified at. Last year. Mm -hmm. It is. We do have some um, thoughts and processes that we'd like to keep it there because we have some major 
things coming our way um, when it comes to that uh, money. We have some capital improvements for the future that are not yet determined. Um, we are in, we're in need of paving the walkways and the parks director can answer any questions about this. The loop, which is a half a mile around Ipswich River Park and all the walkways within Ipswich River Park equal one mile. Um, it has been told by us that um, for us to get that done by our vendor, it would be $63,000 to have them all done. Marty's totally had some crack fill done and he's been working on it. 63 for each half mile. So. Yeah. So 126. Yeah. So they. Right, if we the do. Loop, the loop is a half mile. It, right. it, it obviously, the condition, it's deteriorating a bit. Yeah. So, if we were to do some one. And so, what, what is the anticipated timeline, or is there an anticipated timeline as far as um, redo it? What are we going to do? Grind it? And no, we just don't go over. Just to go over. Just going over. That was what I recommended. To just go right over it. Because I, I just know. Have walked. There's certain areas My wife gets me out once in a while yeah. to walk. There's certain areas that would have to be taken out, but overall, it would just be a goal. In timeline, are you anticipating going out to do it, or are you just thinking about it two fiscal years out? Or? Um, at all, you know, we all have a discussion with our committee and stuff what our priorities are. We're just bringing it up as these are things that are going to have to be done eventually. No, I didn't. So, yeah. From a so visual standpoint, and so having walked it, there's some areas that are in need of repair. Yeah, but we've done that. We've done different sections here and there, you know, and that just doesn't look right. It doesn't hold up. We've tried to blend in certain areas. So we continue to do the bad areas, but, you know, it needs to be done. It's been 20 years, so we've got the price coming on. We've had other ideas of maybe utilizing the DPW. But again, uh, from a timeline standpoint? A year or two. Yeah. It's getting there. Probably depends on the weather, too. I mean, it goes from being drought in the last two years, and now the walk is almost come, coming with water today. You know? okay. Abby? So, um, Marty, you, um, you don't have a you know, five year capital plan or whatever, so you can block things in. Yes, we do. This was this was on. This was one of our thoughts going you know, back to so really getting up to that. So we're just trying to prioritize what we need to do. This has been on his plan every year for about five yeah, years. This has been on for quite a while. And they've asked him if they, he could continue to push it. Get done. <coughs> The, your retained earnings is about 192,000. Did you say it was 65 a year ago? No, it, it, it was. Um, it's up 65. A year ago, it was 127, so it went up. So, please, you, all right. 64,000 in a year. You're, you're, you're likely to be running revenues higher than expenses, just look, looking at, at your budget. You budget it conservatively, which, which is a good idea. But you're you're building up the retained earnings, and if you added another fifty or sixty thousand to it right. this year, it's a pretty it's going to be a pretty big number. And I, I can't see what you have up there, but yeah, it's it would be tough. it would be nice to see what your plans are out over the next five years for for whatever big things. You know, the the walkway that that's fine, and I understand that we need to do it, but just to determine. How much of the hundred and whatever it is that right now, hundred ninety-two thousand right. of that you're going to need? What you need to grow it by in order to take care of the capital needs right. that you that you foresee now, and then something for emergencies that you don't you don't know what's going to happen. Right. Could you say a bit more about what other things sure. could come up. That, um, uh, one of the other do? one of the things that's under the paving um, of the walkways is the recreation center. Um, it's come to Marty's attention that uh, Lynn would like the recreation center paved all in that general area um, because of the safety issues, the dust issues, the icing issues, and, um, and so on and so forth. So Marty has looked into that as well, and the cost of that comes in again when we're using a vendor about just the area that we would do. We're not going to 
uh, pave all the way to the barn or anything or pave where the uh, school buses are, but the areas was about $28,000. So that's, again, on a, a, a within a two-year item. If not, we can't get She would like it done immediately. She just feels it's a complete safety problem with the ice. Um, the other thing is um, Marty looked into the turf field, and that's something that maybe Marty could speak to a little bit more, is those worn areas, do we have to replace the entire turf field or you know carpet? That's always been the thing. Oh, you're going to replace the entire thing, but that's not the case. So yeah, I'll have I Marty mean, speak on that. For the most part, the, um, the turf field is in excellent condition, um, but you know you have, it's just like any other, even if it's grass field, certain worn areas, whether it's uh, gold marks around soccer or uh, the lacrosse around their creases, um, but basically right up the middle. So we could just basically take care of those sections and not worry about $500,000 to replace the whole copy because that's what it would cost. Um, they can come in and do, um, say, one end of the goal and then increase it the across. That'd be like $5,000 for one end, $5,000 for the other. It's Pac's and Rick's responsibility to replace that carpet as needed. That's not, what we've been told, area. yes. I mean, when we when we got it under Hillview and when it became parkland and we became the managers of it, that's what we were told. So, um, you know, the whole fear has been that we would have to replace the whole carpet and how would we come up with another $800,000, $900,000 to do it or what would the cost be when it was needed. And I know Marty's been doing a great job in doing his maintenance plan to make sure that the turf stays in the condition that it is and that's why we don't plow it and that's why we don't want people shoveling it because it deteriorates it at a rapid rate and it just it just elongates it so um, those are the things that we will have to do uh, he, he said would you say within the next three to five years there'll be spots that they're going to have to be done yeah so it's going to be ten thousand ten thousand So we'll give you the, the timeline of the year that it's anticipated with the approximate goal. There's some other things that um, have come up that I've mentioned to Marty and I've mentioned it to Lynn that even in the rec center, the garage is a kind of a non-usable throwaway space. And currently we're going up and down a set of stairs. Upstairs there's no um, heat up there. And that's where another area where we have people um, putting together welcome bags for the town and you know where we prep a lot of things so the garage would be another you know easy access first floor and it has it definitely has maybe the bones for it but it would have to be investigated um, whether it be just for us or if it could even be offices in the future might be something that we could look into for something like that it's definitely an investigation process to see if it's even something that could even be rehabbed or it would have to be torn down we're not really sure so yeah, one to five, uh, absolutely, five year plan. Mr. Steele? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, with regard to the turf field, um, what is the average maintenance cost for the turf field now? Um, do you eventually, I mean, it's on a 15 year um, bonding, so when will we need to eventually replace that whole carpet? Because you're, you're piecemealing it now because you can and it's, it's feasible to do that. But eventually, you're not going to want to piecemeal it all back together again. You're going to have to be... Like I said, I mean, um, the perimeter of it is, you know, right, with the exception right up the middle, is in excellent condition. So it would be almost like brand new. We haven't maintained in um, spring and fall. Um, they come in with a machine that comes actually in and sifts out all the right. trash, right. hair pins, everything, puts the rubber back down, and when they leave there, it looks brand new. Um, we, so we do that twice a year, and that's $2,500. These chunks, that's $5,000 a year. Yeah, that's done. Um, and then we maintain it ourselves. 
but, but, but overall, yeah, I mean. Yeah, and I'm just concerned about the field, not, not the stands or anything like that, because that they support themselves, but the, the you know. know but no, because when they, when they originally put it in, it was new technology that the current keeps growing each year, the technology of it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they threw out a number of what it could be, but, I mean, the, the people that install it are the people that maintain it, and I get a report on it each time they do that, and um, he always tells me, So, so we don't know. I mean, will it outlast the bond, or will it? I believe so. Oh, yeah. Yes, so we should get 20 years out of it. I would think so. Not the entire thing, but if yeah, you allow them to repairs, you would. right? Repairs or repairs, right? right. Because that's absolutely right, Mr. Prisco. So just to refresh my memory on this, so we have our MOU with the school. So the school uses that field. 80% of the time, would you say, all uh, the use? And so when they collect money for football games, they collect money for soccer games and lacrosse games, we get none of that money, correct? That goes back into that field? Zero. So you, so where does the money come for these maintenance and these? The split, actually, the maintenance, the, the 2500 each time. So it'll be one season. I do the so Will you be splitting these costs as well? Just in case the board members forgot. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying this is good or bad. It was an agreement Without that you guys entered the into. The to get the and, um, but the, you know, with somebody using the field 80% of the time and we're picking up 100% of the cost, I don't know how the fin FinCom feels about it, but it does, doesn't sit with me too well. I just think there needs to be a little reasonable discussion on this as we go forward. Right. That MOU that should be probably resurrected we again and maybe. Talk about this, so I don't think they're oblivious to it. You know, they know there's going to be a need, so. They may not be oblivious, but they don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Everyone's a little, no. a little worried about it. I just want to refresh record. everyone's memory on this, and, yeah. and I'm yeah. not trying to point a finger. I just think this is a discussion that it's it. if you do what you're talking about here, that field will get 20 years out of it. If we just neglect it and turn our back to it, we're not. Yep. End of story. Right. He's doing a terrific so, job on it. And then it comes to where do we get the money? And it's not in the, the capital plan for the CIB. So, and what's not in the schools, and it's, you, know, you can't put this on the backs of the user, the parents that are paying all the rates to have all their right. kids participate in your recreation programs and your sports programs. It just wouldn't be right. I wouldn't support that. So. There needs to be another discussion, and I'm not sure what point we do that. And is this an FY18 or is this a beyond 18? This is FY8. Well, this is beyond 18. I mean, there's yeah. yeah. And so you don't want to make those. Looking, that's what you don't want to make those patches in this coming fiscal year. Don't believe so. Okay. okay. Then we not have some for the time. Turf. No, not for the turf. Mr. Keller, it is coming from the fees that they're charging for all of the programs because it's coming out of the retained earnings. And their revenue is greater than their the aggregate of all of their expenses, <coughs> leaving this residual. And that's where it, it is 192000 right now, and it's likely to grow by some amount. But that's what they're using mm -hmm. for this. So it, it isn't a separate funding of it. It's coming out of the operation of the enterprise. Yeah, but you've got to look at that 192000 <coughs> okay, it's not for turf fields. You, they have wells. Yeah, that's for the whole for the whole program. I okay. understand it, but it's for whatever whatever capital they need to do. And if they needed to bond something, that would be used for debt service. So the debt service would have to come out of their operating budget. I mean, they're they're, mm -hmm. they're 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 doing except for the splitting of the maintenance, as I understand mm -hmm. it. They're taking care of the the. the, the mm -hmm. Annual maintenance, you pay one, and school pays. Mm -hmm. And Marty generally meets uh, with them quite often, and he strikes those deals yeah. as many times as he can. Yes. So, and they're generally This is Mary Pelly. Just to, so the money that they are collecting for the games and things like that is going no. back into the fund? No. They're collecting for no. all the programs that Maureen 
everything we do. Before, it's all oh, going that's into her, her, her that's program. Right, right. Yes. right. Not yes. the school department's right. right. It works very well. It's an enterprise fund. Right. It's a water department. If the water department has to go out and buy a new truck, it's paid for by the water department enterprise from their retained earnings. <coughs> Yeah, the mowers and the blowers and the things the that we need is being paid for out of our um, operating, uh, out of our enterprise account. And if we need some from the retained, we budget that we'll need X amount to, in order to facilitate our expenses based against our revenues. So. Just as far as revenues go and, and as far as uh, participants in youth sports, the numbers are down in some. Yeah, How do down. you anticipate that impacting your operations? Recreation's picking it up. Recreation's programs are booming. So uh, last year they had one of the biggest summers we've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, very, very, very successful between Kid Connection and Summerscape. They're just huge programs. And, you know, having two, three hundred kids come to your program every day and they're paying $25, $30 a day. Um, and then we have so many um, councils that are there. We're very specific about knowing how many we need for the ratio and what we need for expenses and um, so as far as uh, the impact of decrease membership and participation in some of the other organized sports right you're less concerned than you well, may have been well, a couple of years ago or well actually this year a good portion of the main field of back of IRP is going to be shut down because the only use we've had with the school construction with all the schools the last two years the last probably more than yeah. two years So I, I, I guess what, 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 what I'm trying to get at a little bit is that you've had a decrease in the operational costs of 60 some odd thousand dollars or something like that, but you're still looking for a flat line as far as an appropriation from town meeting to help subsidize the program, which is fine. In anticipation of things such as that, decreases in revenues in other areas, and then uh, in hopes of uh, retaining and adding to your retained earnings. Yes? Adding to it um, this year, I don't really see that we're going to be adding too much. Um, last year was a good, good year. This year, it could be down because I'm going to right now. I have to be a magician to schedule all the women and uh, men's um, leagues in there but with one field and the turf and in between youth soccer, uh, youth lacrosse, and the weather. So there's going to most likely going to be a lot of makeups or cancellations. A lot of people just go to another field, which. We'll take a hit, but it's worth it for the, the field, so there'll be a little bit of a downturn, but we're okay. Um, you know, we have kind of factored that. Marty told me, you know, more than a year ago, so we're not too worried about um, being, our budget being too crunched. Um, it's not necessarily, the youth sports are all taken care of between Chestnut Street, the turf field, the baseball fields. And things like that they shouldn't see they shouldn't even really see a bump right. um, it's the adult fields and um, a club sports are taking a little bit of a bump but we we try to shift and we try to tell them to be more creative on those fields to be a little bit start a little earlier and a little later we know you want to be done by four o'clock in the afternoon but the sun's out till seven so if you want to get your game in you want to play at Ips River Park you might have to play to six seven o'clock so that's what we're trying to trying to do to um, keep the revenue still there and but then again that still takes impact on the one field that's left so we're you know we're trying to put them over to the turf field and offer them playing under the lights on even Saturday nights on a makeup or a Friday night um, as well because you know it's it is kind of nice you know some of the adult people go for it some of them like no nah, I don't I don't want to do that it's my Friday night I don't want to do that I play Sunday morning so we're we're working with them to try to get okay. them where Any they other? need to be any other questions on recreation? No? All right, Maureen, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> and just yeah. on a, another note, I want to that. thank all of those who um, were able to attend, purchased a ticket, sponsored um, our wine and food social. It was a wonderful event. Um, the weather didn't seem to deter many people from coming. We had a, a very good crowd, and 
a wonderful time, and we we'll thank Maria Brown for stepping up. Um, she stepped into the role that uh, Sheila Sturdivant did. She did a phenomenal job, and I don't know how I would have done without her. Um, and you know, all, all of the volunteers who come, whether they're high school seniors, on the senior uh, rebate program, our staff, people from town hall that volunteered, they did an excellent, excellent job, and we really appreciate um, their help. It was really great, and we look forward to the 20th celebration. And you'll all get a little news brief on that as to what it is. That'll be fun. That'll be a lot of fun. So it'll be just like what 20 years ago. Prices are going down 20 years, and um, it'll be it'll be a good time. Thank you. Thank you. I'll get that done. Um, Point out to you. Sure. So, Liz, you're up. Mm -hmm. So, finance and accounting budgets. Um, there's two sections. One is labeled finance treasurer, and the other is just labeled accounting. Um, one of the major changes um, is shifting my salary um, all to the finance budget, where in previous years um, only a portion of mine was, which was considered a stipend for being a finance director. Um, so that has been moved to the finance division. Um, the other line item in the finance division would be uh, the assistant finance director. Those are the two items that are in that budget. So it's strictly um, personal services within the finance division. And then moving on to accounting, the changes in accounting um, that you will see is the reduction in personal services. Um, it's not one for one. Uh, there has been, uh, the clerical contract was settled um, and <coughs> the administrative assistant who is part of the clerical union also um, being a grade four physician receives a stipend under the new contract. So. Um, there's step increases, the contract settlement, as well as a new stipend. Um, there was a slight increase in professional services accounting, um, which has to do with our actuarial study. There's been some changes um, under the GASBY rules. And um, in order for us to have either a presentation each year or for our audit where they have to update the figures annually, um, that's the increased cost uh, for the actuary. Training and education is a slight increase. Um, this is to send um, this, my staff to the Munis Conference, which in April of uh, 2018 will be in Boston. Um, and then the two line items under other charges and expenses, which dues and memberships and subscriptions. Um, the dues and memberships is an increase to one of the accounting organizations that I belong to. And the subscription is um, the annual cost of having a Wi-Fi hotspot. So, <coughs> those are the changes. Any questions? Mm -hmm. The Wi-Fi hotspot? Refresh my memory why you need that? So, um, if I go to, say, a conference or a meeting in Boston, um, there's no Wi-Fi that may be open to the public. Um, that's happened to me quite a few times. Always Liz, Liz needs to, access. To always so, be able to connect, but I, I don't put in for a cell phone reimbursement, so it's kind of a swap. Okay. Good. I forgot that you don't put in for a cell phone because Verizon <laughs> has this new plan now on limited data, which your phone was automatically a hotspot, mm -hmm. and uh, you save yourself 500 bucks. But, mm -hmm. yeah. It's actually cheaper than what the cell phone stipend is, so it's $39 a month. 
trying to save you 500 points. It means nothing. Move on. I'm good. <laughs> the rest of it, though, surprised in you and Michael. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm very disappointed in both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I am. We had this conversation last year, and nothing changed in this budget. We had a lengthy conversation last year, and if you don't remember it, go back and look at the video. And I'm not even going to have this discussion. I'm voting against this budget, just so you know. You guys got short memories. I, if I am understanding what you're referring to, Michael and I have had um, lengthy discussions. We've actually also had discussions with the new HR director in regards to that position. Um, so I think that the three of us should probably sit yeah. down and, and meet. Which you. position? What are we talking about? Finance we still allow people to work from home. It's not something that we should we should encourage or continue to do. And we talked about this last year, and I don't want to get into a lengthy discussion again, but it's a bad precedent because it's it's going to snowball on you. Because what stops the next person from coming into the city of the town administrator or CU and says, I want to work from home? It's, it's not about the person. It's nothing about the position. It's about... The practice, and I'm not. I'm, I'm against it. It's not right. We're a professional organization, and we should work full time. You need the help. I see the ops tempo that comes out of your office, and you know. Again, go look. Go back and watch the video from last year. So I'll be voting against this. One. I guess I'm, I'm just more results oriented, and it seems to be. But I'm, but it's sweat I'm very equity satisfied at this point. with the. The information, the flow of information, the quality of information, the timeliness of information. Uh, yeah, but at what cost? It's working. You You're know. burning people out. Yeah. But if you want to continue to, no, no, I mean, I out. have to trust. I have to entrust, you know, these two people to bingo. Uh, yeah. Administer. Administer. I want to see a finance director here for a I haven't long time. heard an awful mm -hmm. lot of. Uh, issues or complaints about yeah. it, but maybe we're not hearing from the same people. Well, you know why? It's not broken for you. It's not broken for me. But I, well, you and I both know what happens behind those doors over there. Mm -hmm. You know, and the lights are on at 8 o'clock at night, 8.30 at night, 10 o'clock at night. You know, we're home with our families and they're not. So, yeah, because so we can get the information. It's not broken. And, uh, you know, and I have an issue with people working from home. I do. And uh, I something I never believed in. Any other questions, comments? Uh, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I do recall the discussions that date back two years uh, with regard to the issue of employees working from home, and um, it's uh, something that I, I share the concern with regard to, and it's something that we have sought to scale back in my time here, not to the point that it's, uh, it is... Um, very limited at this point, and the instances beyond that limitation are isolated um, at best. We've also seen where the structure in the office was um, pretty regimented. We've moved away to reduce the number of hours that that's taken place. Um, it's not gone away by, by, I think, everybody's admission, but it is something that, uh, through my discussions with the finance director, we believe that the value we've been receiving is, um, has been worthwhile for the town in terms of the expenditure of the dollars. That said, uh, practice is one that's of concern to me uh, and has been. Um, the issues of the sustainability of the operation of the, uh, the department is something that's uh, a concern, um, not just in terms of the financials, but in terms of some of the other responsibilities that the department has carried over the past couple of years. Uh, I think we're making progress with regard to some of those responsibilities with the advent of the Staffing and Human Resources Office. I think we're, 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 we're making progress. Uh, are we there 100 percent? No. Um, uh, am I concerned for the sustainability of the office? Yes. Um, is what's being discussed going to solve the issues? I think the finance director and I aren't certain that that will necessarily solve it, but I think we recognize that there is an issue that um, we need to solve. And it's not related to a position in the office, but more the long-term sustainability of what that office puts up. And I look at it with an additional look of, from a management standpoint, as the leader, as the CEO of your staff, <coughs> you also have to balance what you're placing on them, what it's taking them to get the job done. 
and it does come to a point where certain people will get burnt out and then we don't have them here next year or the year after because there's only so much you can it's only so long you can do that you can only work at that ops tempo for so long and we need the finance director to be a finance director and we need an, in my mind an assistant finance director to be the assistant finance director and that means when you open up in the morning when you go home at night and you can't do that from a remote area and my view on it is a lot goes through that office especially personnel issues to me logically it falls within the assistant finance director responsibilities so they so you are the CFO can be the CFO it's just operational that's all I want to see how the money invested the way we invest it that's what we've done that's if you go and read the position scripts and you read the organizational chart that you put forward, that's the way your operations on paper is supposed to run. But it's not. Good, healthy discussion we weren't going to have. That's good. Well, no, I got I got okay. it. No. If you just let it go, if we didn't say anything, I would have moved I, on. I think it was me. I think I got it going. That's all right. Um, any other uh, questions uh, regarding finance and accounting? I'm sorry? Isn't this only a two-person department? Am I looking at this wrong? Yeah. Um, no. The accounting finance department is staffed with um, the finance director, town accountant, the assistant finance director, okay. assistant town accountant, an administrative assistant, and an accounting analyst. Yeah. The accounting analyst position was added uh, two, two years ago. Okay. Yes. I'm specifically looking at you and your assistant. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Right? It's broken That's down, right. yes. The in the finance division, it's myself and the assistant finance director, and then accounting has an accounting analyst and an administrative assistant. We could combine the two departments essentially. Yeah. Um, is your assistant a full time assistant? It's thirty hours a week. All set. Administration. Mr. Chairman, through you, there are two budgets that fall under this category. Uh, there, there technically are three, but one of them is human resources, and we took it separately at a prior hearing. The two that remain, the Board of Selectmen budget, two changes in the FY18 request for the Board's budget. The first is an adjustment in non-union wages that's contractual in the amount of $401. The second is an anticipated increase in the MMA membership dues for the town of approximately $200, so although we await a final number from the MMA. The second budget, the town administrator's budget, the adjustments are as follows, contractual adjustments for the department head and the non-union employee in the amount of $6,609. Uh, advertising increased $200 to reflect actual costs. Leases and rentals, this is a reduction of $5,000, which would allocate the cost of the reverse 911 into the water enterprise. Professional services, $250 increase to reflect actual and anticipated increase in costs. $500 for printing, which reflects increased costs for printing. $650 reflects actual and anticipated increases in costs for postage. And then uh, $1,000 reflects the actual and anticipated increase in costs for hosting uh, town meetings. And when we look back a year from now at the fiscal year 2017 budget, we'll see that there'll be a bump in the cost of town meeting. It's obviously going to be tied to the third meeting that we had in March. Uh, we're not forecasting any additional town meeting for next year, but if there is, and there's a challenge. And We'll deal with it in next year's budget. Any questions or discussion? <coughs> um, Michael? Edu uh, training and education. Where does that fall again? I, I forget. Are you speaking to tuition reimbursement? Yeah. Uh, yes, in the human resources budget. And I believe that, that Mr. Collins had a request in his budget for uh, two employees. Is that correct? I'm trying to remember. One employee. One. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, with regard to the larger operating departments, those requests would be within their you particular budgets. Right. Police, That's fire, fine. and DPW. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Pretty simple. Well, that concludes our budget hearings for the evening. Thank you.
and we're only eight minutes behind schedule. Pretty good, other than the first half hour we missed. All right. uh, Thompson Club uh, DBA TCC Grill Seasonal License uh, Renewal. Uh, I believe the board had asked that uh, representatives from Thompson Club come and just uh, fill us in as to uh, what the current situation is, uh, what the this request and maybe a future request may be, uh, because there were some questions in relation to some knowledge that some members of the board had uh, had heard uh, through the community that it's a change in personnel and operations there. So why don't you uh, give us Is a note. Mr. Houghton. Yeah. Yes. Do you want me to speak here? here what, a whatever you're most comfortable with. Just fine. identify yourself for the record. For the please. record, my name is Attorney Tim Houghton, H-O-U-T-E-N. I am uh, also an attorney, but I'm also the uh, secretary of the Thompson Club. Um, just to give you a little brief history, just so you remember, last year, the Thompson Club uh, built a grill room on the second floor. Mm -hmm. um, I came in to get a, uh, uh, a license for that. Um, at the time, we had a, a manager, her name was Anna Pepe. Um, she came in, she, and this board was nice enough to appoint her as the manager. Um, it just, it didn't work out in August of last year. Uh, Ms. Pepe left. At that time, I came forward. Um, uh, Joe McCarthy became the manager at that point. Uh, he had TIP certified uh, and ran the um, restaurant till the end of the year. Uh, this year, we put in for the uh, renewals. At that time, we were actively um, searching for a new manager. Uh, Mr. McCarthy um, stayed on, was gracious enough to put his name forward to stay on as manager while we looked. Um, since we put in those renewals, as some may know or may not know, we've put in two now two applications for a change of manager to Mr. Tabor. Um, that will, I believe, be acted on by this board at your next meeting. Um, so. We're talking whenever that whenever you folks tell me it's it's going to be on that's what it, it'll be on. Um, so, you what we're here tonight is to allow Mr. McCarthy to remain as the manager until, and if you approve the uh, change of manager at your next meeting, um, should be noted that as far as management goes right now, as, as we all just look outside, you can guess that we're not open. Uh, there's really <laughs> nothing to manage. Uh, the snow is on the ground. The people aren't golfing. The people aren't there. Um, we don't anticipate probably being open for maybe two weeks, but you never know. Um, what we did discover, and I'll, I'll give you, this is probably more you're going to hear about next year, is we, we, we had envisioned ourselves as being kind of a restaurant that would serve people dinner um, after, at nights and stuff. And what we discovered is that we're pretty much governed by darkness. That people go there when they golf and it's light. They'll stay, have a have a drink, have something to eat after they golf. But people weren't coming in that weren't golfing. So um, because of that, that and Ms. Pepe was looking more for a restaurant, um, which is why it didn't work out. So we we're discovered we're adapting, and so what we have is uh, we have a grill room that's really it's it's for the golf the golfers. It, people uh, finish golfing, they're gonna go for a drink, they're gonna eat. But uh, so we're just asking that you. Um, continue allow Mr. Uh, McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy has gone, has been fingerprinted. He is still TIP certified um, to run the, uh, the restaurant. And uh, when we come back before you at, at your next meeting, if you so tell me to, then we will uh, present uh, Mr. Tabor for the two other licenses. The is only open to members. Correct. Okay. And members of the green who are. Right. are so we had envisioned that people would come by, like leave the green, you're in the house, you come over at 7 o'clock at night, have dinner, it, it never really worked out. It, people were golfing, would come over. Our, our actually high time is probably on a Saturday from 12 to 6. That's like the biggest time we have the most people at that. Mr. Yule? I'm trying to think back. Uh, I guess it's just over a year ago. Um, the it, it obviously it's only open to membership correct correct so nobody could come from going to Teresa's would be unless, to go. unless I invited you to golf with me and I took you for right. a sandwich after but yes. I'm your guest and it, it's, yeah, you'd be if, happy, you have to be a, there has to be a member with you yes let me know okay um, <laughs> 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 it's a private club private club license. right 
Right. So we don't have it. If uh, if we didn't have what's called the club license, we would it would be a general license, and we couldn't refuse to serve anybody. Anybody could walk in there and, and at any time. But it is a separate club license, which right. restricts it of who we can serve. To. Right. Okay. So All right. Then then um, I guess that answers my question. Thank you. So was this before us because they didn't put their renewal application in? Or? No, the renewal was was timely because it's a seasonal okay. private club license. Okay. Uh, the question came about, uh, yeah, Michael and I had some questions in relation to what we had heard as to who was operating, what the operation was, op what was it, what was happening there. Sure. And uh, we weren't sure and we weren't, uh, the board wasn't fully informed. Uh, Again, I, I don't know how often Mr. McCarthy's on site. Mr. You know. McCarthy is. <laughs> uh, Mr. McCarthy practically lives there. Uh, he's there, you know, and especially this time of year, setting up. Um, you know, in addition to the presidency, he, he. I mean, he. He does everything but wash the dishes. Um. I'm the president, and I do not get paid. But usually, I'm there all year, three or four days a week. Except. Uh, you know, in the winter, he maybe, goes, maybe goes I go away from much. Yeah, I think most of the concern that some of the board members had or have and continue to have is, you know, if we uh, have a license in someone's name, you know, it's anticipated that they're there during the operation yes. of the facility during operating hours. Yeah. Uh, tough to get volunteers. Uh, maybe it's not too difficult to get volunteers to do that on a regular basis, but. Uh, they're ultimately responsible for the operations of what's going on there, and it's anticipated that they're putting in almost full time. And having done this, and, and as Ms. Ms. Pepe was, she was going to be there. Right. Uh, and, and having done this with other, in, in my town, I, some of you may know I'm a selectman in Middleton, uh, we have the Ferncroft, and one of the biggest problems we have with the Ferncroft is that it's the hotel business. And they change managers quicker than they change pants. And one of the things that we don't like is we, A, don't like to have a manager not on premise, and B, we don't like to have a manager and then manager de jour. So the reason we renewed with Mr. McCarthy is because we knew Mr. McCarthy would be there. We were interviewing managers. We didn't want to put down Joe Smith, and then I come back to you two weeks later and say, hey, by the way, Joe Smith didn't work out. We were hoping to give him a couple of weeks, see if he understood business, because obviously you can see Ms. Pepe had an idea that it was a restaurant. We needed someone that understands this is a golf course. This is, this is not, it, it isn't Teresa's. This is, you know, this is a grill room for people that play golf. And, and if they're comfortable with that and they can run, the, you know, live that, and I believe we do have that gentleman that can do that. So that was our, that was more for the board. I didn't want to, like, I, I oh, hate yeah, but I, Obviously, from the position you've sat in over in Middleton, you can appreciate our concern as oh, to definitely. what's going on, who's there. Who's, who's overseeing the no, operations, the last thing and that's why we're looking for an explanation. Yeah, no, and, and Mr. McCarthy is there, like I said, more times than anybody, and he was there, you know, at the end of the year and this year, but w we never intended him to be the full-time manager. We intended him to be the interim, because he's, you know, he's the jack of all trades. I'm the president of the uh, board. Yeah, just, just quickly, it's open seven days a week? Yeah. Right. Yes, yeah. It, okay. it will be. It's not open at all. Right no, now. I, I understand yes. that. But when once the season yeah. starts, it's open seven days a week. You're there all seven days. Me? Yes. No. Then, then. I'm who's there. I said four or five days. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So, so who? We don't we need somebody tip, tip certified to be in your place? Yes. Do we? Yeah. Do we, we have, have that? We, we've hired a manager recently. We haven't had started yet. He has to get. The fingerprint did, and so forth. So is that going to be come before us? Yes. Yeah. So not yet, but it, it will. No, we presented. I've, I've, I've filed the information. What, the, what, the, I, what I have asked, it, they, they've submitted both applications, a right. renewal and a change of manager. Mm -hmm. right. And for practical reasons, for state processing purposes, the ABCC can easily cross paperwork, which would actually delay uh, things for them. So I suggested, and tonight we'll take up the a uh, renewal of the license, and at our next meeting, we'll take up uh, the application for okay. change of manager, which will allow the paperwork to be processed through the ABCC in a more yeah. reasonable fashion with less chance of confusion. Great. So can I make a motion? Yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, 
Uh, I move to renew the seasonal club or alcohol license for Thompson Club Inc. DBA TCC Grill 2 Mid Iron Drive to expire October 31, 2017, subject to all regulatory department's requirements. Second. Have a motion. <coughs> Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous. Thank you very much. And, um, Will you know we, when I'll be? We, that's later on in our agenda, but I'm anticipating the 24th? Yes. I'm anticipating the 24th. Okay, great. I will. With their acquiescence. So. Okay, I, I, I'm sure I will find out. But thank you very okay. much. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you very much for coming in and explaining what, what's going on. That's great. I'm going to listen to your budget. <laughs> <laughs> you want to give an update? I was going to pass it. suggest we pass over it. All right, we're going to pass over um, health insurance update. Did you already do all the minutes? All right. Uh, 2018 budget review status. Mr. Gilberto. Mr. Chairman, through you, I've asked the finance director to prepare a brief presentation just to provide an update to the board as to where we stand in terms of the work of the financial planning team. We have a couple of slides that we'll present here. The board members should have seen in the packet the detailed revenue and expense plan from the March 10th financial planning team meeting. There is a financial planning team meeting scheduled for tomorrow, um, but uh, I'll turn it over to the finance director at this point. Okay, so um, basically this is a snapshot of the March 10th uh, revenue plan that was discussed at the financial planning team meeting. Um, there have not been many major changes uh, since our last budget update, um, but it's a comparison between FY17 and FY18. Um, we can go down, go down the list. Um, we just have our tax levy, and we have new growth. Uh, we have our debt exclusions, which would be you know the high school, middle school, the police station, various other school projects that are still in that figure. Uh, state aid numbers, which are based right now on the governor's budget. Um, this is an annual reimbursement that we receive under the old SBAB um, rather than the MSBA program, where they uh, reimburse you over time versus where you get immediate reimbursement now under the new rules. Our local receipts you can see here, which are made up of motor vehicle excise tax, um, you know, in lieu of tax payments, uh, license and permits, et cetera. Other uh, financing sources, this is transfers from uh, all different areas. It could be from the debt capital stabilization fund. Um, it also has to do with water uh, indirect costs. It, we have cell tower revenue. Um, so forth. So those are some of the other financing sources. Then we come down to the bottom part where we have our budget breakdown. Uh, we have our fixed cost total, which is health insurance, uh, life insurance, uh, Medicare, our debt service, uh, regional school assessments, uh, our general liability insurance, our workers comp insurance. So that's what goes into the fixed cost total. And then we come down to, we have the town's level service budget and the school's level service budget for, um, this was voted at town meeting, and these are our anticipated FY18 budget submissions. And then we have the breakdown of available revenues, uh, less, you know, what the, our budget, level service budget amounts are, and these are our shortfalls at, at this given point. Almost there. Do you think? Interesting. Any questions on this? That is an interesting number. Do you, you have a break? I'm sorry. I, 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 I through the chair. I think I'm going to ask the same question. Go ahead. Ask. <laughs> the red part. Do you have a breakdown of where we, how we got to those, to those gaps? By any of, chance? of you want to know the available revenue prior? Is that what you're asking, or no? The budget gap is really what I wanted to. Do you have a separate breakdown on that? Breakdown of. Of what makes up that budget gap? Yes. How we got there, in other words. What, what happened to get us there? Well, it just has to do with the available revenue sources that we have from the above um, revenue items. Uh, then when that is broken down, it's 66 for the town gets 34% of total available revenue. 
and the school department gets uh, 66 percent. So that is the difference between the fixed costs come off the top of our total revenue, and then we have our level service budget, which leaves us with those deficits. I, I, Kate, if I could maybe yeah. help you out a little bit. I think the issue is this isn't about level services. That's why it's red, right? And it's a clear fact. These are level service budgets. This is about level service. This is about maintaining the same programming and uh, personnel, uh, taking into consideration increased costs of operating and for whether it be health insurance and all the rest of the fixed cost stuff, and then contractual obligations and increased operating costs uh, for facilities. And at level services, both sides of the equation are in a deficit situation. So it's level services with added FTEs to have the level services. Mr. Gilberto. In the case of the town's budget, I don't think there's a single new FTE that's in there. Right. Um, and if I may, through you, yep. Mr. Chairman, just to, to the question from Selectman, uh, Selectman Minipelli. Um, we went through a pretty extensive review of the fixed costs, I think, at a meeting about a month or so ago, yeah. maybe six weeks yeah. or so ago. And the, the only change I would note is that we're, uh, we've adjusted the request for health insurance uh, to reflect uh, uh, the work that's underway on that. And I won't get too far into it because some of it is still a subject of uh, discussions. Mm -hmm. But we have made that adjustment. And that adjustment, along with some additional one-time resources that we identified, led us to the numbers that you see here. Um, I'll note that the school's level service budget gap at $454,000 is based on level services. They are requesting a modified level services budget, which does increase that, uh, that gap. Um, but uh, we've, we've reflected here what the level service is at this point. Mr. Yule? Yes, I just want to get clarification. You said the school uh, modified level services? I'm not sure what that. My, my understanding of their request is that they, they have a... Um, uh, long-term strategic plan that they uh, have been seeking um, funding for um, over the past few years. They've modified that long-term strategic plan to a number that's less than it would otherwise have been for a request, but uh, it, it is, uh, it is a, a beyond level services. That's my understanding, at least. And I don't want to speak for the superintendent of the school committee, but I think that that's the best way to describe that. And I'm saying that because you may hear a number that's different than that discussed. Right, but I, I guess that's 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 why. And the, and the word modified uh, uh, kind of throws it. What what may have been presented at the school budget hearing is different than this. Right. But the budget hearing is the tenth, right? Yeah, so they already had a workshop. workshop. Would have been a workshop. 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 Okay. workshop. So, <coughs> but they, they have they have a hearing scheduled for the tenth. Yes. The hearing. Right. Yeah. Next Monday night. This is Mandy Pelly. Just, just really fast. So our ninety-one thousand is basically because of the increased health insurance expense, or no? No, our ninety-one thousand um, could be it towards uh, contract settlements. Um, we also are carrying money in our salary pool for contract settlements for contracts that expired June 30, 2015, that are still not settled. Right. Um, so. The, I would say the majority of ours is due to contractual obligations. Well, the, there is also, I mean, obviously fixed costs have risen. No, right, right. Beyond the level yeah. of two and a half percent, yeah. which reduces the amount of available revenue to be split between general government and the school department, which is exacerbated by the fact that we have contractual obligations to meet if we want to maintain the level of services and personnel. Now, that was my next question on school, the school side of it, where their gap is, I think, much more broad, I guess, than ours. Do, um, is that due to them adding any additional positions that aren't there right now? And um, how much of that for 54 is the addition of new, you know, new positions to their budget? I don't know that we have that breakdown, um, but in order for the school to achieve their level service budget, there there are some additional FTEs included. Uh, but of the 454, I'm not sure what, what those positions made up. But that 454 would be 
the salary, insurance benefits, employee benefits for those? It would just be strictly salary. All um, employee benefits are in this fixed cost total that we, we carry the school's health insurance, uh, you know, Medicare, life insurance, that's all in the fixed cost. That all comes and off that's the based top. upon their level services budget as presented. So those fixed costs for those positions are in the fixed cost total up above. Well, I'm just, because I want to I want to understand this, so, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sorry if I'm asking a lot of Please. questions, but I know that you put this together because we asked you to, mm -hmm. so that's why I want to, I want to ask you. So you did explain that the last time you did this presentation to us, but in terms of their level services budget, it has the addition of new employee, mm -hmm. which bumps up the fixed cost total. So you've already Correct. attributed that bump. Yes. That increase from the 20.3 to the 20.9 because of the addition of that would be correct because it's not an addition in, on town side it's huh? addition Maybe on school two. side right mm -hmm. correct so that di difference isn't just what current employees it's the addition of new employees yes. that's going to bump all of these figures up right yes the fixed cost total I believe includes three new FTEs which is school exactly. addition yes that's correct if, if, if I may ask then, and maybe this isn't, I shouldn't be asking you, I should be asking the school this question. With, with the level services, if they're adding new employees, how is that level services? Isn't that supposed to be with what you have? Mr. Gilberto. Yeah. Again, I, I don't want to speak for the superintendent of schools. Um, whose recommendation this is at this point it's not an approved budget but it's a recommended yeah, budget I um, my understanding is that in order to continue to deliver the services at the level they're being delivered at now there's a a, a, a need for additional staff that's my understanding so it's so if the current services that they have for FY 17 to maintain those level services they have to hire three more FTEs to do what they're doing now. Is that my? If, if I understand the representations correctly, yes. Uh, that because of changes in enrollment or the services that need to be provided to a uh, particular cohort of students, that there's an additional need for staffing, as I understand it. And again, this is not an approved no, budget. No, I understand. This is just I, a I'm just trying to understand it. Sure. When, we, when, when I think when people hear level services, they're assuming it's. And this is what you have, and, and you're keeping it right. the same so, way this yeah. year. But in reality, there's there's new, uh, an estimated three new FTEs. Uh, that doesn't sound level, you know. You know, uh, from a layman's, I'm not a finance guy, so I'm not, you know, uh, trying. And it's, I'm not trying to be critical at all either. I'm just trying to to yes, better, better understand. So the other the other question I had is. Um, the. Uh, and I'm not involved in the the healthcare discussions, but is that in, is is whatever is in the making in there, or is yes. that something that will? It, it is. Uh, if it we, happens, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we've taken some um, you know, some steps with regard to reflect this, and I don't think I'm saying anything that we haven't said to employees uh, in in our discussions. But we we believe we have the advantageous news with regard to the renewal going into fiscal year 2018 with regard to the carrier. And uh, that information is uh, accounted for okay. here. Um, there may be additional um, opportunity that is not reflected here, but uh, the discussion we've had is we don't believe that it would be prudent to further reduce the health insurance budget at this point in time until we have some experience under our belt. But I'd rather not say much more than that. Right, right and, now. and that, you know, as I said, that so to, yeah, there's a fine line there. I'm just trying to. To answer yeah. your question, though, do you, Mr. Chairman, to, to the extent that we believe we're going to be making adjustments related to the health insurance budget, we've made those adjustments. Right. <coughs> yeah, we don't anticipate any reduction, and even at the finance budget <coughs> level, we're comfortable with the number that's in there now. And we don't anticipate any further reduction. Right. So it's already reflected. And, yeah, and I just, I would, I just had two, uh, two more questions. So, with the, they, the school must have had a pretty significant increase in enrollment to add those extra positions in. I, I don't know that the overall enrollment is the driver versus the allocation of resources within the enrollment. Yeah, and it depends on, you know, it's not relative. They could have bubbles in 
at certain grade levels, which requires shifting of staff or additional staffing requirements in, at certain grade, grade levels, or in certain programming, such as special needs, depending upon who moves into town, whether they need some additional paraprofessionals to assist uh, those students, and based upon their enrollment in those types of programs, as well as uh, as the student body moves through the grade levels, it doesn't necessarily mean a reduction at one level, say at the elementary school, as the bubbles go through the middle of the high school. There's, there's not a corresponding decrease. Well, you may need an increase in some staffing levels, just based on enrollment in certain grade levels. And then my last question, I th and I think you explained this before, but your um, calculation of uh, decrease in new growth is based on just kind of a historical review of that? Sure, so for FY17, we uh, had a reval year, so everything was reevaluated. Um, and, you know, we had originally budgeted 500,000, thinking that, it, for FY17, um, thinking that that would be a conservative figure for a reval year. However, we came in a little shy of, a little shy of that. So uh, based on the assessor's assumptions, at this point in time, um, that's, that is the conservative figure for new growth. Based on permits, um, you know, there's not a lot of maybe complete new construction jobs. It's, there's more renovations and additions, so. Mr. Prisco. Thank you. Do you have a, a next level down breakout of the fixed costs? We talked a little bit about where, what's school and what's town government. Um, I could get that for you. Uh, I, I don't need it tonight, okay. but I would like to see that. Absolutely. Uh, and, I, and if it's possible to get it, what it looked like in FY16, FY17. Yes. Just those two years. Because mm -hmm. uh, I'm just curious what that 20, out of that $20 million number, how much of that is our town government? Responsibility, yes, for us to school, and then you know what it was for the schools in sixteen and seventeen. I can go back. See if probably, there's any trend. I probably can go back benefits. to even FY thirteen, um, and you know do. I think a it's a trend that we have to start looking at. Mm -hmm. I think when when it comes to uh, some of the fixed costs, particularly employee benefits, it's pretty much the same. It's like sixty six, thirty four. Uh, anyway, it can't be. Yeah, it is. You can't because they're retiring on the school side far faster than we are on the town government side. Uh, not necessarily proportionately, but uh, maybe at a little higher levels. But that's how we're budgeting anyway. Yeah, so, it, but be an interesting exercise. But mm -hmm. I think when we, when we finally look at it, it's going to be pretty close. Okay. Uh, I yep. hope it is. I have a funny suspicion it's not going to be. But I'd like to be proven wrong. But anyway, there's a financial planning team meeting uh, tomorrow morning uh, where we will continue to uh, work through this and look at other uh, ways to somehow or another close the gap and mechanisms to uh, finance things so that we can at least try and maintain the level of services that we currently enjoy. Mr. Chairman, through you, we have one more slide which just shows the proposed use right now of free cash, the balance of free cash. At the June town meeting, you see that there's a series of Warren articles that um, we've allocated portions of the free cash to um, the bathroom facility at Arthur Kenny Field, the master plan to the CPC, which we may be able to defray partially depending upon whether or not we get a grant from the state, the town hall fire station feasibility study, which may or may not get more discussion amongst the board, our obligations under the capital plan, the use of debt capital stabilization funds. And then we're carrying right now $150,000 for the use of snow and ice, uh, free cash for snow and ice uh, for an overage. Um, as I mentioned at the last meeting, we were basically right at the number. I'm sure we are in excess of that number, so we're eating into the $500,000 in free cash that we allocate each year. This shows $150,000, whether it's that number, potentially a larger number. Um, we just, we'll, we won't know until later in the season. Uh, we just had a storm. Fortunately, we didn't have to call in any contractors to do plowing. We used our own staff. Um, but uh, it was a long duration event that began Friday and didn't end until uh, I think it was 9 o'clock on Saturday evening in terms of our resources. So that's an assumption of 150,000. We're not saying that that's what it will be. Could be larger, could be smaller. If it were 150,000, that would leave a 
free cash available in the amount of $236,000. If we were to expend the entire 500000 as you can see, we would have a, uh, a negative free cash number we need to reduce from within these Warren articles. So pray for no more snow. Jeff, you're pondering. Yeah, I, I am. I, I'm, I'm looking at the 400000 for the uh, bathroom facility and uh, a lot of discussions, the number was 450,000. Mm -hmm. So what happened to the 50,000? We used it at a town meeting. You voted. Right. We voted at a town meeting <coughs> to move forward with the plans, the design plans. Is this, this number but here? But I thought that was going to come out of the 652. No, it was come, right. But part of the 652, $450,000 was allocated to okay, go I towards that cost. Okay. We were only going to bond 200 200 to. So now we've expended $50,000 of the 450. And free cash that was available. Right. So you're marked for that over. project. Okay. So to prior move prior to um, March 13th town meeting, um, we had one million six seventy one. So that's why I put the balance of free cash as of today at one million six twenty one because that fifty thousand has already been appropriated. So. Um, that's why the bathroom facility was right. reduced to 400000 versus the 450 The 450 becomes part of the total project cost, but we've already appropriated it. Right, okay. Okay. And thanks for reading my mind, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, any other uh, questions as to will we currently sit and uh, again, it's, it continues to be a work in progress yeah. and, and I have to say uh, you know town administrator Liz uh, superintendent business manager school committee board members here are uh, working very hard to uh, come up with some sort of a game plan to close the gap and uh, propose something to the entire board so we can come to giving with a balanced budget be nice is that in here, by the way? I didn't notice. Yeah. Um, yes. And the, the revenue um, and expense sheet, which has the detail, is also in the uh, right. in the meeting packet and in the FY18 folder. As are right. the materials right. from as are the materials from the March 23rd school committee budget workshop. The board members should find that information in there as well. Okay. Well said. Okay, workshop. Okay, minutes. Move along. February 25th, 2017, budget meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the February 25th, 2017, budget hearing minutes as written. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Uh, just the, I will be abstaining because I was not present at uh, that Saturday meeting. On the motion before us, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? One abstention. So three. I missed that one. Okay. This is this is the February twenty fifth budget right. meeting. Uh, Mr. Uh, That's Mr. Yule. Okay. And then uh, three oh and one. Three oh one. And I have noted that Bob is not here. Right. Uh, and it's March twentieth, we want to hold it. Yes. Okay. Okay, March 9th, uh, 9th, regular executive session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the March 9th, 2017, regular session minutes as written. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Manupelli. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm abstained because I was absent. <coughs> Three in favor, so what abstention, Mrs. Manupelli? <laughs> All right, March uh, 9th, executive session. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the March 9th, 2017 executive session minutes as written. Second. Motion made and seconded. Second by Mrs. Manupelli. Uh, Mrs. Manupelli, I assume you're going to be abstaining from that one too? Yes. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstentions? Mrs. Manupelli. Uh, March 20th, we're going to uh, ask to hold uh, 
been noted that this is something that needs to be addressed uh, going forward, so we'll have that at our next meeting. For the regular se executive session is okay. For, for the, just, just for the regular session. Just for the regular, regular, executive, for the regular session. Session. executive session is okay. So, okay. So I should so go forth make the motion for the regular, executive session. Right? Executive session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the March 20, 2017 executive session minutes as written. Second. We made a second by Mrs. Manuelli. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed. And I abstain. You abstain. Okay. What abstention? It's absent. Okay. okay. Legal bills for February. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the legal bills for February 2017 in the amount of $9,770.57 as follows. Koppelman and Page, PC General, $4,188.57. Koppelman and Page, Koppelman and Page, PC Labor, 1665000 Koppelman and Page, PC J.T. Berry, $3,237.50. Koppelman and Page, PC 9 Mill Street, $55.50. And Thompson West Publishing, $624, for a total of $9,770.57. Second. Motion duly made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I'll just make a note through you that um, our legal services budget uh, is growing tight. If you looked at the spreadsheets, uh, some of those costs, again, we believe we're going to be able to book off to the existing JT Berry appropriation, but uh, it's something that we're going to monitor closely as we go to close out, close out the, uh, the rest of the year with four months to go. No more and questions. In a town meeting upcoming. <laughs> no so more legal questions. No more questions, yeah. <laughs> We have to know the answers. Well, we have our lawyer right here. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, review draft uh, June town uh, meeting warrant articles. Oh, excuse me. Before that, yeah, this one. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Through you, there uh, is a draft of the warrant that uh, is in the um, in the packet. There are a few articles for which we don't have any language. Most notably, the last couple of articles pertaining to general bylaw changes. Um, one of which relates to drones, the other which relates to the sidewalk snow removal bylaw. Uh, I referenced uh, in, in the discussion uh, at the last meeting uh, what uh, the intention was of the administration uh, with regard to those articles. Um, we, um, we continue to review this draft and we'll continue to, to adjust it appropriately. Um, and with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that the board members might have. Um, Mr. Yule. Yes, thank you. Um, with regard to the drones, uh, I did, uh, I had expressed at one of our earlier meetings I had uh, an interest in um, uh, participating in, in the discussion on the drones uh, simply because with the advent of, of of deliveries beginning to uh, possibly proliferate uh, in towns, and more specifically our town, that we probably need to put some time into uh, putting a bylaw together, probably working more with, uh, collectively with the CPC on this, on uh, uh, drones being used within the town. Uh, for the sole purposes of uh, uh, delivering, uh, I shouldn't say sole purposes, for, for the concern of, of the drones constantly going over people's property uh, at low levels that would in interfere with their privacy, uh, I would be concerned about the accidents happen, happening and so on. So I, I'm not sure and I need to, you know, I would like to talk uh, further with the uh, police chief on this because I'm not sure how we can control the advent of drones uh, being over the skies of North Reading and over the property lines of people, uh, over people's properties. Uh, you know, 
I'm from the transportation business, so when you make a delivery, you go up the road, you make a left, you go to the other corner, you make a right, and then you stop and you deliver. You're, you're, on, the, you're on the roads. But in the advent of drones now, um, uh, they will be able to, they have the ability to fly right over people's properties, and they can be doing that at a low level. Uh, the big concern is if, if, if it's a package delivery, maybe that's not an issue for some people. But you can't distinguish between that and whether it's a peeping Tom or something, because you, you can't tell. So um, I wanted to participate in that, that conversation. And I, you know, I don't know how we go forward, you know, as far as the, as a warrant article is concerned. I know the chief has something more limited in mind, but uh, you know, so I just, Mrs. Manupelli. I have a limited knowledge of this area because I have a family of drone fanatics and tech techie wizards right. in my house. But I do think that this you is including yourself in that category. <laughs> I don't ever get the chance to operate them, but it would be fun if I could. But anyway, I do believe this is an area that is heavily regulated, particularly for deliveries, and um, and I believe. I believe there's a pilot's license requirement for commercial use. That I'm not sure about. I know so, there's a registration with the FAA that is required. Yes, right. <coughs> but, but the peeping Tom that. thing, I mean, if you actually see a drone in, in action, it's very similar to, you know, video, video right, or Google, right. the Google vehicle going around taking a streetscape. It's it can't peer into people's windows or things like that, but what's open that anyone can see is obviously visible with the drone, right. you know, with the drone. But, um, but I, I think there's, it's already, if it isn't the subject of regulation, it's going to be, but I think there are some regulations for commercial delivery it, it, yeah. type of thing. I don't even think that's allowed yet, but. But, um, I, don't, I don't think. I'm think sure that is. I'm sure that we would need to, if we're drawing up a bylaw on that, we would need to sort of mirror. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be able to do something differently than what's already in place, regularly right. already. Well, I, I guess uh, part of what uh, the genesis for me in the thought process is that the um, uh, CPC was very proactive in uh, addressing wind turbines in the town. So they were very, very involved in that, and, and they passed. We have a, we now have a, I believe we now have a bylaw uh, in place with regard to wind turbines in the town. They can be a certain height, they can, you know, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So they were very proactive on that, and I guess that's um, where the genesis of my thought process is. If they could do that, then maybe there's something we could do about, about drones. And, and it's a big concern. It's a, it's I a big think you could certainly regulate it, but. Are you going to regulate remote controlled airplanes and you know remote controlled helicopters and you know all the other gadgets that people fly and things like that? But I mean, maybe I'm thinking bigger than that in in the sense that um, that I'm not, I'm not thinking of a little somebody at the moment. I'm not, I think. The police chief is addressing this issue: someone having a drone and flying it over somebody's house. Okay, I think the police chief's version is is addressing it. Th that, that that's way. my understanding of his primary right. concern. So he he's, he's concerned the about the neighbor or no the, the or invasion of privacy yeah. that type of thing. Right, right, and the okay. uh, inability yeah. to enforce. Right, and then I'm I'm looking bigger. In oh this, yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of looking a little bit bigger than that, and I, I realize the commercial, state the yeah. state laws. Well, not just commercial. I mean, there's somebody. You know, somebody could be on the other side of town and doing something like this. So, um, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that um, uh, the 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 use of these, you know, I mean, can't, I'm sorry. There will be there are probably are going to be state laws and federal laws and so on to yeah, come right. into play. I understand that. You know, I understand that. But but then sometimes it comes down to us, and 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 I don't know if there's going to be a height restriction on these things. Yeah, I think there is for the for the commercial use of them, just like they require a license, pilot's license. I think there well, is I, I because that, of the, yeah. you know airspace and everything else like that. Right. So, 
And I think we could, we should, you're talking about something different to what's already in place for regulating, regulating it, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, either complimenting it or, or, yeah. or what have you. I, it's just a big concern that yeah. I have. I know it, you can't imagine how bad this can be until it gets bad, I guess. You know, and it can get bad with, with, uh, with drones. And if there's a way for a town like North Reading to control, hopefully control, the proliferation of, of drones going over people's property, that's... That's the aspect that I'm more concerned about. That they, it's, it's their routes and how, and, and they're going over people's property and they're not high enough and they hover around or they crash on the people's property. These are the things that I'm concerned about. And I don't know if there are any steps we can take, but, but it's, uh, um, it's a concern that I have. So that's why I wanted to. I think, uh, you know, to, to me, I think the, the privacy issue is. is paramount importance right. I think we probably would have most control over initially you know and whether or not statewide uh, there's some legislation pending or there are a committee looking into it I think we should contact you know Representative Jones and Senator Tarr to see because this isn't just not threatening right. this is anywhere yeah. and we know that um, you know congressionally they're going to be starting to look at this stuff too the FAA, FAA has already introduced some sort of uh, uh, legislative uh, regulations Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I think I, I don't want to expend too much of our resources yet mm -hmm. in areas which would probably be overturned or superseded right, by, right. by federal and state regulations. So, um, you know, I think we should, if you have some comments or concerns, uh, to me, I think we need to take it up with, you know, our state and, led and congressional delegation right. rather than uh, <coughs> our police chief. You know, to me, the things are our way through and to me, I think we can, yeah. you know, control what we can control right now. Yeah. Uh, take some first steps to ensure some privacy uh, from regular citizenry yeah. out there who are not necessarily having to be, or even if they are registered uh, with the FAA, FAA but uh, controlling their behavior, you know, in their neighborhood, say. Uh, Mr. Prisco. Massachusetts did take the FAA law into it's executed now. It's in place, and it, there's like four little stupid things that they require. Like, don't can't fly any further than 400 feet. Can't fly near an airport. And it's like another one. It's like, don't do stupid things. <laughs> no, it literally <laughs> says that. Yeah. And there's one other one. Yeah. No, that's what I mean. So, <laughs> yeah. this peeping tom thing you reference. That's a stupid thing. You can't do it. Right. Yeah. And the law, I think they kept it pretty general to cover yeah. it. So it's already in place. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't even think we have to do anything. I think the chief already has the authority that if you know somebody does something stupid, he has the authority to report them to. But the again, FAA. if it could be more restrictive in, in relation to uh, you know seventeen privacy, you have to be it? seventeen 17? years old or older to fly them. Oh, okay. I okay. knew there was four things. Yes. So I I don't know that uh, I don't know that I'm in favor of spending an awful lot of time and energy yeah. uh, resources. Yeah. Uh, Broad brushing things. Right. Like that. The bigger I, I, I issue understand. yet. I, I think that to me the dialogue is important. Right. More than, more than no, I, I'm else. not disagreeing with you as far as that goes. I think, uh, but I think it comes to a higher authority. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Gilbert, I'm sorry. Certainly back. Um, so just with regard to this, as again I mentioned in the first discussion, this came up as a result of the movie and some complaints that were received, and we had some voluntary compliance that took care of the issue. The chief was concerned that there may be a day that comes that he gets a complaint and the person is not so willing to voluntarily comply. In the interim period, there has been some update to the federal regulations. Um, we're not sure that that's necessarily sufficient to address the concern or not. So that's an exercise that's underway with regard to this at this point. You know, right. I, I'm not saying that there won't be a need for something, but it, it is a possibility as we continue to do research this. There isn't a lot out there in terms of municipalities addressing this issue, but it's something that um, we were exposed to because of the movie production being here and it's something that the chief felt we ought to respond to. So we'll continue to, uh, to update. Uh, the board uh, through you, Mr. Chairman. Selectman, are you asking to participate in the planning discussions with regard to this? Uh, yeah, I, I, I would just would like to, if that's uh, uh, okay with the, the board, to do that. I think we all have the opportunity to weigh in at some point. You know, yeah. I don't know. I just don't want us to run around with a big 
make this do a big project. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, just think, I just think there needs to be a consensus from the board right now whether or not how deeply we want the administration to get into it. I personally think it should just be cursory at this point and address the issues that the uh, chief has, has pointed out mm -hmm. uh, rather than delving into the whole issue. I think one effort should take place, and that is awareness. We should definitely make a little extra effort to create either on our website or the chief's website awareness so people go in if they're interested in flying these things they can click on that mass massachusetts law <coughs> so they can see it and read it. it's very simple it's one page and and then a phone number at his department where they somebody in town can contact them for further information but i think awareness is probably the effort that i'd like to see other than that i think we're good and just just for these have to be registered anyway i don't, I don't mean to interrupt you no, no, you're these, fine. You're these have to be registered anyway and if someone is actually engaging in that behavior and they do actually look into it, the footage, you, it can't be all, it, it's, it's captured, so they can see what they're doing with it. So it would really be idiotic for someone to use it in that manner. But also in a movie production, it's a commercial project that would require one of the pilots license it under the regs. This, uh, this was, this, an, this, uh, this was incidental. It wasn't part of the production. It was somebody who was yeah. curious. Just curious some, about the production. Yeah, it was just a, a a resident in town was having their drone watch the the production, so they they weren't employed by the production. And that was a problem for the movie production. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, there were some concerns that were expressed. I don't know if it was limited to the movie production, but again, yeah, I yeah. want to stress there was voluntary compliance with the individual said we're not looking to cause a problem. Right. I think That's the like chief telling someone put your put your put your phone away. Don't take video when you're out in public. It's how quick, how far are we going to regulate things that are open to the public inspection anyway? You know, don't fly your drone here, there, and everywhere. I mean, how far are we going to regulate this? Right. Well, I, I think and how are we going to enforce it? That could interfere with what if it, if it was interfering. With with what they were doing. I think that was, it's one thing to stand here and take a picture. So what, anyway, just to, to move the conversation along a little bit, I think, uh, I don't think there's a consensus of the board to dive into this too deeply. I mean, if you have some thoughts and, um, as to what the general bylaw should include, I would say forward that to the administrator and the, uh, and the uh, police chief and inform them as to why you think and how it would fit. Um, I'm not ready to dive into it. Personally, I'm not ready right. to dive into well, it yet. I, I, guess, I guess I I haven't seen what's being drawn up to have a question or a suggestion to add or to subtract. You know, it, yeah, I mean, it's see, I'm, I, and I'm not looking to um, impose a, a, a thought process. It's just, it's more of a dialogue thing, so I can sit there and I can learn and I can say, oh, yeah, yeah, because I, I mean, complete confidence and faith on the in the chief, that's not that's not the question. You can just forward but, to us what. Yeah. What the, uh, how about the chief will, the administrator well, uh, will be forwarding what the general outline of the proposal would entail, and then we can opine individually, even uh, as to whether or not we think it should be expanded or contracted. Will this be in time yeah. for the to to be a? It's a warrant. Uh, it's it's. Blank, though, but will this be in time for that meeting? The April 24th meeting, yes. Okay. Our intention is to have right. something in the packet when that <coughs> meeting back to yeah. Yes. Okay. So well, as soon as it's available, on. we'll provide it. Okay. Yeah. Was Hopefully. That, I'm sorry. Was that the only other one that wasn't was blank, though? The sidewalk snow removal uh, one was also one that right. I, I referenced as well which uh, I reported at the last meeting that we had concerns with regard to uh, uh, compliance um, as a result of the discussion, I have um, contacted the uh, chamber to arrange a time to discuss further what some of the obstacles might be with regard to compliance, but uh, it, it was our intention to look at establishing a procedure that didn't require multiple visits by police officers to establishments uh, when there's non-compliance because we were finding that in the past couple of years when we made some adjustments and we did see some improvement in compliance, um, it wasn't to the extent that I think we wanted to see it. And one of the obstacles we've identified is that the process requires that there be a verbal warning and then a follow-up inspection. And it's a tremendous amount of resource that's being required for a long stretch of road versus you know, a commitment that we've already made to public education as to what the property 
owner or business is required to do, and then when the season begins, if they don't do it within a timely fashion, to address it with our own resources right. and to recover the costs. I mean, that's really what I heard from the board the last time we discussed this. I think what we're finding is the process that's required in the bylaw is inhibiting that, is right. inhibiting that and we want to improve it. Right. And again, not looking to be punitive, we're really just concerned about getting the sidewalk clear from the snow without taxing our police resources to do so. I, I think if, <clears throat> if the bylaw is amended to the area in which we're talking about, I think uh, a couple of storms will be an awful lot more compliance on a timely basis. But Mr. Steele. Yeah. Well, I mean, unfortunately, uh, it's kind of a good news, bad news scenario this winter because, again, there were still people that did clear the sidewalks, <coughs> but there were too many that did not. And probably it, the same characters. Probably, and, and, and it was da it's dangerous out there, right. okay, uh, uh, for pedestrians. And they're all pedestrians that you do, uh, you can see the footprints and so on, the people who walk and have to go over that snow. And uh, uh, as I mentioned before, when I went out to do a walk and I had my, I had no choice but to have my back traffic because I was on the sidewalk where there was, it was snow, it was plowed, but then it stopped, and then I had to go out in the street, so it was very dangerous. Um, but I hope that, and this is what I would be looking for, and you can convey this message to the chief uh, in what he's working on. I just simply think that if a police officer is driving down there and he sees that that sidewalk has not been cleared of snow within 24 hours, he's going to ticket that person. Okay. Um, it's the same thing if they see somebody speeding, they ticket them. So you see, you see a crime being made, occurring, which is not clear, clearing the sidewalk of snow, or of, of any kind of debris for that matter, okay? Uh, takes nothing, in my estimation, for a couple, uh, police officer to pull over, write out a ticket and say, here, you didn't clean the sidewalk. I'm hoping that that's the direction that it, that the police chief is going. I know the problem that we have right now is you've got to give a warning, then it's going to be two weeks. Yeah, so I think we're going to see some um, recommendations and modifications to it that uh, we'll probably embrace readily. I, uh, just to respond yeah. to that, I mean, as I referenced in the last meeting, what, what, again, and this is not something, unlike the drone scenario, it's not, this, this one is more of a collaborative effort involving the Public Works Department, myself, and the Police Department. Um, uh, what we envision is something that has a short, has a reasonable window, but not one that's so prolonged that uh, we have a period of time after snowfall has ended that people are then out walking and not able to do so. So probably 24 hours, giving people 24 hours after the snow has ended and um, imposing a, a fine of some significant amount as well as the ability of the town to go and clear the snow and recover the cost of clearing the snow. Something combined in that fashion. That, that's what I envision. Again, may not be that final product, but that's what I envision. Mr. Prisco. I, this thing, this, is, this gets under my craw because you guys are trying to do something that you're gonna put people at risk. And I don't know why you keep having the same conversation every year. It's unexecutable on Route 28. When homeowners on Route 28 are not required to s shovel their sidewalks, mm -hmm. you're gonna force a business to shovel the sidewalk up to the homeowner's location and it's not going to be shoveled, and you're going to put these people out in the street. So the best way to solve this, and let's just get over with it, the town needs to plow the sidewalks. It's the only way, if you really want this to be safe, you're going to get away with it. If you're going to try to execute this plan, you're going to force the chief to go give tickets to the um, business owners is stupid. We're going to pu push people into the street because you're not going to give a ticket to the homeowner that lives right next door to a business. And you're going to put these people at risk, Jeff. So if you really want to do this, then let's put it in the budget. And can we move on? Just send the sidewalk plow down one side, turn around, go back down the other, and move on. But I, I don't object to that, by the way. I mean, I, I don't think that's a bad idea. But we Figure out how to pay not, for it. We've not let's move done on. that. So what, that, uh, that you're better off spending time figuring out how you pay for that than us trying to have the chief go out and spend money on an $80 an hour officer to go write tickets. This is crazy. Well, I don't think you, I don't think you, it necessarily needs to be a 
because if it's the same offenders and we're we're using our resources to clear it anyway, it should just read you have you have twenty four hours after the storm ends to clear it. Otherwise, you're going to get fined two hundred dollars a day till it's done. And if we do it, we're going to add into that the cost of our removal, and it's going to be a lien on the property. Yeah, that's you're exactly talking about something a little bit from what I'm hearing, something different. But it's we should thing. write it that way, and that that my understanding was it was directed towards the businesses clearing off the road so people could walk down. It wasn't homeowners that we had the issue with. It was businesses who weren't who weren't doing it. But you're forcing the businesses to plow up to those homeowners who are not plowing those sidewalks, and you're forcing people to walk out in the Route 28. That's what you're doing. But if the town's going to be doing it anyway. Different no, story. No, if the town's going to be doing it after the 24-hour period, they're going to be taking care of those residential property portions of the sidewalk anyway. Theoretically. Theoretically. But the problem is now you're going to send a police officer out there to execute this, to do tickets. How about we just set all that aside and just when it snows, within 24 hours, the town administrator has the DPW director send the the solid walk plow down one side and down the other, and that's it. And figure out how we pay for it. That's what we should be spending our time on. This problem gets resolved. Because what you guys are trying to okay. do here is you're, you're going to put people but, at risk. But, uh, can I say, that's for another day. We decide whether or not we want to support the article as once it's put together. It's okay. Right? And you could always you could always have it re revised for the for emergency DPW emergency personnel to be because they're the ones that are going to know what the cost is to remove it. Adding that to a violation and citing the crop. you could you don't have to put it on the the burden on the police to do the ticket writing either. You could write it so that you give that ability to the, you know, personnel or supervisor, do you, you know, who's supervising the removal operations too, you know, give them the authority under the ordinance to cite someone for a violation and cause they're the ones that are going to know what it costs. But that, that is, I mean, that, that certainly is an option. I, I would say that the, you know, I foresee that it, if this were implemented in the way we identified it, in the way I, I, I've been thinking about the recommendation would be based on my conversation with the chief. I envision that there would be a police officer there present because I expect that there will be properties where there's a significant amount of pushback when the equipment shows up. Um, and, and to the point that was brought up earlier, uh, you know, with regard to it, it, there are other communities that do sidewalk snow removal. We, you know, when we we do it in a number of different areas, mm -hmm. mostly tied to property that we own, and mostly tied to walking Schools. routes to the public schools. Um, you know, this area, uh, for whatever reason, the townspeople approved the bylaw going back a number of years that put the responsibility on the, uh, the non-residential property owners. Um, and we're, we're trying to figure out how to make it work without wasting the town's resources and, and really uh, ultimately ad addressing the issue, which is getting the snow off the sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, because all of the fine in the world doesn't get the snow cleared as we know. Right. You can fine all day long, but it doesn't achieve the goal you're trying right. to say. And, and that's what been the concern. What I'm suggesting is it works in Chelsea. We can, we can achieve the goal in what we should be spending this time that we keep talking about this bylaw on is how we pay for it. That's what we should be spending our time. I mean, you can't fine all day long either. Every day that a, that a violation occurs is a separate fine. Right. You can only fine once a day. Money talks, yes. nobody walks. <laughs> <laughs> so. Right. Any other articles that uh, are of interest or concern at this point? The drones and snow. Drones um, and snow. Drones and snow. All right. So. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, to your question, <coughs> I did want to add a request of the board to add a warrant article for the for having town meeting on Saturdays. I would like to have a placeholder for that. And we talked about it, and I had requested that we have the special town meeting on a Saturday, and everyone said, well, that's a better conversation for the regular town meetings, and that we can discuss that in the future. And this is the future, and I'd like for us to 
hold, have a placeholder for um, uh, having town meetings on for uh, for the the regular town meeting June uh, June and October on Saturdays. I've had many conversations with seniors around town who said to me that they uh, were more apt to come, and some said they would come if it was on during the daylight hours that they could come to a meeting, town meeting. But they just can't attend at night because they can't drive. And you know the issue with um, June is summer. It's not quite it's still spring when, when, it, when the meeting occurs. But uh, so it's light when you come go in, but it's dark when you come out, and that's an issue you know, for them. So um, uh, I would like for us to have a placeholder for that. Well, if there's a consensus of the board to put that forth for the town meeting's consideration, the board can always include a warrant article. If it isn't the consensus of the board to be supportive of an article like that for consideration at this particular time, we wouldn't necessarily. So I'll put it to the members of the board as to whether or not there's an appetite or a um, consensus to include a warrant article to pose the question to town meeting to see if they wish to change the date or day of the week the town meeting would, or would occur. I'll leave it open. We know where you stand, Jeff. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Michael. Mr. Chair, when we did the special town meeting, I did put a little social media survey out there, and the feedback I received was really in favor of keeping it on a Monday evening. Um, they, a lot of people kept talking about going back to the fact that they work all week and when the weekend comes, they got the sports with the children, they got events with their children and, and their time with their families and they much rather come home from work and give up that one evening on a Monday night. But I agree, it, there is an impact on the seniors. I've heard from them as well. But the majority of the people that are gonna come that I, I heard from said they'd like to keep it on a Monday night. Um, I didn't really hear from any seniors. I did ask uh, Mrs. Perini to get feedback from her folks that visit, and she said she would do that for me, and I haven't had a chance to follow up with her to see if she's learned anything, but I did send her an email asking her for, for that data. So that's all I'll share with you. Okay. I would tend to agree with Mr. Prisco that I, I know this was a concern, but I'm wondering if there was is another way that we could maybe transport to and from people that really wanted to go that were just simply unable to drive there. Or is there a way for us to make that happen? Um, because I agree, I, I don't think any if we have it on a Saturday, no one's going to show up. Mm. We already have limited attendance as it is at, on the on the. Week week night, but I'm not I'm not sure if that would increase the attendance or not. And uh, we have all these other people to think about that are there, you know, having people come in, you know, checking people in, and that that those people too. I wonder what they want. Whether they would be rather have it on a Saturday than. We certainly would incur more costs as far as staffing it all the time on Saturday. But it's probably, it might probably be about the same. Probably the same <coughs> because we do it, yeah. do it after hours anyway. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've heard the discussion over the years. And, you know, it was moderated in 1973. And uh, you know, periodically it, co it comes up as to whether or not you know, it would enhance in attendance and whether or not. Uh, more open to more people. Uh, again, the, the consensus that I've found over the years, and again, as I age, um, anybody that has school-age kids or involved in uh, any type of activities, count them out. Um, you get a few of them now. You get some of them now. Um, as far as the seniors, yes, it's a concern, and I think Kate has a good point. That, you know, maybe what we should be talking about is providing some sort of uh, uh, transportation 
for those that uh, feel so they can't uh, safely you know, come and go to town meeting. We have the senior van. Maybe we just put on additional staff person to, to uh, transport some people. Uh, town meeting nights if they yeah. really, truly want to participate. Uh, that would be a good discussion. You know, I think that, that might warrant some discussion if we're looking to address that segment of the community that has concerns. You know, let's make it easier for them to get there. Um, and timing's and, and, actually pretty good to do it. We're still talking about the budget, so. Yeah. Um, but I haven't found over the years uh, a tremendous appetite to switch. And I've had a lot of discussion with a lot of people over the years. Not a lot lately. Uh, again, people's minds change and demographics change. But I think the demographics of the community now are, are younger than they were. While we have a more of an aging population, the school age population and then the kids involved in the activities is a little bit higher now than when my kids were even there 10 years ago. So. I'm not opposed to asking town meeting their opinion. You know, and again, maybe we could do that in the form of a resolution or something at the meeting uh, to get a consensus to see if we should be offering something in October. Um, but I, for one right now, would not be supportive of, of changing the town meeting to a Saturday, me personally. But that doesn't preclude me from supporting putting an article on, you know, if somehow or another I felt there was a groundswell of support and crying or outcry demanding an, an opportunity to speak about it. But I just haven't heard that personally. Well, Kate? Just one quick thing too that I think I don't, I see this because I have school aged kids, but there's an awful lot of people in the town that like us are volunteering their time and they're working their weekend schedule around, you know, let's say an evening soccer game that they're coaching or, you know, weekend practice. That they, so it's not just the people that are, have the kids participating. It's the people that are massive amounts of people that are volunteering their time to, to coach or train or teach or do these other things that are, they're relegated to doing that on the weekend because they're working during the week. So I think we'd be probably eliminating a whole segment of those people from coming who, I, who were at the meeting, this last meeting, because the issues were important to them. You know? To that point, when my kids were younger, again, I coached soccer basketball, baseball, you know, all three seasons, both boys CCD. simultaneously, and then yeah. still did this sort of stuff, and, and the weekends were for uh, those types of events and family time. And, yeah. uh, so I, I can appreciate your thought process. I just haven't heard the crying need from a lot of people in a long time, personally. Yes, Steve. Um, first of all, to me, it is a matter of fairness. And I, 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 I use the term fairness simply because at night, but if you have the meetings at night, seniors don't have a choice to do their duty for the town because they cannot drive at night. So they are discriminated against because it is at night. If it's during the daytime, and we know people can't go, you can't make it during the daytime during the week because people work, we understand that, all right? But if you make it during the daytime uh, on, on a Saturday, all right, that gives everybody, uh, everybody, whether they're seniors, parents with kids, or what have you, to make a decision to go or not to go. And it's a fair option that everybody has, all right? And, you know, parents, if they choose to, cho uh, to, to uh, go to uh, the soccer game, I understand that. My kids played soccer. You know, I've, I've gone through the same thing. All right. If that's the case, you know, that's a decision that they can make. But seniors can't make that decision at night. They're not given that option. And, and that's my primary, that's reason number one for me to do that. It's a matter of matter of fairness, uh, you know, with seniors. The other thing is about busing seniors in and so on. There's a cost to that, you know that, that adds to the budget, all right? But seniors are early to bed, early to rise people. So if these meetings go to 11 o'clock at night, we might have to wake them up, myself included, <laughs> to, you know, uh, uh, because these meetings can be dry, these town meetings. So. Uh, but they're early to bed 
individuals. So it's very difficult uh, for them to to put them in that that in position of have to go have to go home late at night and so on and wait for a bus that can only hold so many people and uh, therefore uh, uh, make it it's more arduous for them to uh, uh, to attend town meeting. That's why at night it, it's it's not a good idea. All right. Um, Again, having it during the daytime just simply allows uh, you know, everybody an opportunity. Now, you, I know Mike, you did a little bit of a survey, and it's an online survey. Most of the people I'm talking about don't have that luxury of going online to, to, do, to do a survey. I don't okay. know. You know, I've been doing a lot of taxes over the last few weeks, and a lot of seniors uh, who are uh, 65 and I mean, I have a woman in there 84 years old today who's uh, did you have an email address? Here's my email. I'm on Facebook. Uh, more and more people are communicating with their children and grandchildren. Um, and I agree, there are an awful lot who are not. Yeah. But there are a lot more than you think right. that are and, actually and utilizing, which is a wonderful thing. And as I know I have a lot of them on my yeah, social media. So it's it, that are participating. And as far as as whether the numbers will increase or not on a, on a Saturday, um, you know, I don't know the answer to that because you can bring the horse to water but you can't make him drink so I, I would say that you have a better chance of an increased population of participation at the meetings with seniors than you would have now I would say that that number would increase right? and regular town meeting you don't need a, 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 a limited you don't need a quorum okay so so but that's ten, not an issue. My guess is you're talking about you know a ten o'clock start. And you, ten o'clock. You got to do four hours probably like we normally do. So you're talking ten to two right in the middle of a Saturday. I think you're going to have an awful lot of uh, people who are reluctant to make the commitment on a regular basis. And, and I, but I, I don't know. But you know, and again, I haven't heard the way. outcry. I, I, I'm, again, while I'm sympathetic and I think your your thought process is clear and uh, makes some very good points, uh, I'm not necessarily looking to change the, the structure and pattern. Yet. Other, they do so maybe this discussion well, will stimulate so. some more. Yeah. Well, then I'll get some. I'll get some more feedback, Mrs. Manupelli. And I just want to go on the record and say that we're not discriminating against seniors or elderly people. And I don't think that the charter organized town meeting process is discriminatory to anyone. It's open to everyone. Everyone's invited. Everyone should be participating if they can. And we would want to make sure that anyone that wants to be there at the town meeting at the regularly scheduled town meeting lets us know so that we can so I totally disagree that we're discriminating um, in a, in <coughs> you don't think the structure does it I'm not no, saying I'm you. an early to I'm bed and saying, early ri to rise yeah person. but I'm not and saying most you of the people that are here are probably early to bed and early to rise but I'm not making well. it personal I'm so I'm I don't think that I think the, that the crosses the age it, levels it, I just don't think it's I don't know you I, Mike I'm, that, I'm more that like term that. discriminatory get, get no, thrown <laughs> around I think I <laughs> think I'm it's it kind of yeah. a, a, a Offensive. So, well, well, you shouldn't that. take okay, it personally. Excuse me. It's not, it's it's not that way. Mr. Ewell, please, you shouldn't please, take it personally. One second, please. Right. When you I, get don't that way, the, uh, I don't think we need the debate on the issue. The, the, the question right now is whether or not it's a consensus of the board to include an article or not. The, the merits of the argument would come later if it, if, if it is a consensus of the board to put it on. So I will ask once again. Mr. Prisco, would you like to have it put on? Mrs. Manupelli, would you like to have it put on? I, for one, am not at this particular point in time. I'm not opposed to having the moderator. Uh, have you asked for a consensus vote as to whether or not town meeting would like to consider it at a later date, you know, in October or something? But I don't think we need an article right now. Uh, we have 30 some odd articles uh, to go through. Uh, I think it would take a lot of discussion. I would Prisco. not be in support of it right now, okay. based on the feedback that I've received. Mrs. Okay. Mayne Pelly? I wouldn't either. Okay, so good for you for bringing it up. Good for you for putting huh? forth a uh, uh, thought process for consideration, but it's not a consensus of the majority of the board at this particular time to include it in this warrant. Doesn't preclude us from putting it in October. Doesn't preclude someone from offering a citizen's petition with 10 signatures to have it put on um, at a later town meeting. And again, uh, uh, it's not unprecedented <coughs> for, and I think the rules allow for uh, a quick consensus vote on an issue uh, with prior 
a notice to the moderator that it's going to be done. Well, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, waste my time going that route. But uh, just but, the people who normally attend. The, well, I, you know, okay. The seniors, the seniors are. Seniors won't be there, so they're the ones that matter in this question. Okay. So I, I, again, I think maybe the discussion this evening will help uh, generate some discussion out in the public, and maybe the rest of us will hear back from a certain constituency that we haven't heard from yet. But I appreciate your effort in bringing it forward. Any other issues in relation to uh, town meeting warrant articles? No. Nope? Too right. many. Too many. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All right. Appointment of uh, primary and secondary records access officer. Officers. Yes, Mr. Chairman, in accordance with the Chapter 121 of the Acts of 2016 and MGLC 66, Chapter uh, and Paragraph 6, 6A, I move to appoint the following individuals as records access officers for the Town of North Reading for the terms to run concurrently with their employment in these positions. Primary RAO. RAO Town Clerk Barbara Stats or her designee, RAO for the school, excuse me, school department superintendent John Bernard or his designee, RAO for the police department police chief Michael Murphy or his designee, RAO for the fire department fire chief William Warnock or his designee. Second. Motion by Mr. Yule, seconded by Mrs. Manapelli. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous. Review upcoming uh, meeting schedule. Uh, there appears to be, you know, our next uh, scheduled meeting is Tuesday, the 18th of April, which is Monday's a holiday. Uh, and it's also school vacation week. And uh, I know that there's a conflict. Uh, hopefully, our chairman will be back in action, but we can't be assured of that. I know that I have a potential conflict and another member of the board may also. Uh, so it could very likely be that we would not have a quorum for the 18th. So the suggestion is to move our next meeting to the 24th of April. Then it just becomes a question as to whether or not we want to meet the following week or push it out two weeks. That's correct. Right. The board has the opportunity to sign the warrant as late as Monday, May 8th. Um, and then uh, that would still allow for it to be delivered to residential uh, addresses in town in time for the statutory requirements. Um, we could certainly evaluate the, where we're at on April 24th in terms of how we want to handle it. Uh, one advantage to moving it to the 8th is that it uh, gives us additional time for consideration of, uh, well, it basically it gives us the opportunity to add a third meeting if necessary on May 1st. Um, but if we don't need it, then we would be meeting on, on alternate weeks. So if it's uh, okay in the consensus of the board, our next meeting will be April 24th. Or and, and then we'll have a regularly scheduled meeting for May 8th with a potential, depending upon what issues arise, uh, on May 1st. But a regularly scheduled meeting will be on the 8th. And then the finance director is reminding me that she's previously committed to travel to the Munis conference uh, out of state, so she's not going to be here on, on Monday the 8th. On well, Monday the 8th? So let's definitely have the meeting. <laughs> Reconsider our budget. So, so we're, we're moving the 17th to, to, to the, the 24th. Uh, to the 24th, okay. Yeah. And then uh, we're already scheduled for May 1st, but... Uh, oh, yeah. We're already scheduled for May 1st. Yeah, by policy would be May 1st and May 15th. It would be the first for the 15th made. by policy. Uh, we can keep that schedule. Uh, but we could potentially move it to the 8th and still be able to meet the requirements for signing the warrant, getting it out and mailed on a timely basis. Well, it would make sense to go to the 8th since we're meeting on the 24th. Because you don't want Liz to be available. <laughs> <laughs> I believe two years ago you did it without me, so you <laughs> well, you did, a, you did a great job having all the information there. So. Yeah. Uh, but so what's the feeling? Uh, first of the eighth, first and fifteenth, or eighth and twenty-second? Uh, it's back to back. You feel May May first? No, it's going to be eighth and. Uh, Mr. Prisco. Uh, there, two, three, so there's five Mondays in May, so it would, would make more sense to do an eighth. 
in the 22nd, I think. And then we go back on our regular schedule in June, which would be June 5th. So it'd be a little separation. Okay. The only thing that would be handled in between would be a uh, reorganizational meeting, which is a brief meeting, probably the the Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday after the election. Fourth of May. Yeah. What, what, yeah. what day is the election? The second. 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 So usually we do it on that Thursday. Usually, that's right. Yeah. Can we just review that schedule one more time? All right. We're, we're moving this, the seventh. <laughs> the seventh. That was the eighteenth. Our next meeting will be the twenty-fourth. The twenty-fourth. We have a scheduled meeting right now for the first, but we're talking about moving it to the eighth. So it's, it would be the first and the fifteenth by policy of May. First and the third. Right. Instead, it would be the 8th okay. and the 22nd. So no meeting on the 1st. We're meeting on but the what's, That's what we're deciding. Oh, I see. Okay. That's, that's what we're discussing. I'm adding it in. Mr. So Prisco was advocating for the 8th. And the okay. 22nd. And the 22nd. All right. Pointing out that there are five Mondays in, in May. And again, the 8th does not interfere with our ability to sign the warrant on a timely basis and get it mailed out and meet the required time restrictions. Okay. So you've got us penciled in? I, uh, <laughs> that, 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 that's fine. That schedule works, 8th and 22nd. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, yes. thinking about the way this would play out, though, we still need to have the budget hearing for the board's final recommended budget to town meeting which would, as it, as it would lay out right now, would likely be that same day, May 8th, as I think about it, because we, we would likely make any final adjustments to the budget at the April 24th meeting, hopefully, and then print, print the budget, have the hearing on the budget. It's just going to, it's going to, whatever day it happens, the first of the 8th, it's going to be a lengthy agenda. I think that's just something we need to be prepared for, and it's going to likely include signing the warrant and a budget hearing as well. So I just would make everyone aware of that. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we aware? So beware. Be you know, aware. Gonna, whether it's the first or the eighth, it's still going to be a, the budget will be, have to be ready and we'll have to have a hearing. It will probably be in better shape on the eighth only because it will give us more time to close the gap, mm -hmm. work on closing the gap. So we, are we going to stick to the 8th and 22nd? Just so long as everybody's aware that we're probably going to have not only Bring sign the warrant, which isn't yeah. a big deal, but, you know, a budget well, here. Well, you may have to get out of work a little early that day. <laughs> and we, we start a little earlier. Mm -hmm. All right. Start yeah. at 6 that day. Yeah, I, I would suggest that, starting early. And, you know. Okay. And then, so we uh, may well, and then the 8th, maybe we can have the assistant finance director sit in for Liz, since that's what we're going to be doing the budget. We're going to need yeah. somebody with some, we're going to need some adult supervision. I guess, <laughs> right. No, I, I would agree. I, I, we, we, would, we would need to have somebody here from the department. Another alternative we can look at, too, depending upon where we're at on April 24th, is whether we have the budget hearing as a standalone agenda item on May 1st. But we don't need to make that determination now. I, I think we should go with the 24th, then the 8th, and the 22nd. And, and we'll evaluate. The fourth, we're going to hold as a reorg meeting? Yes. So on the 24th, we'll continue to evaluate as far as Good. whether we want to have a budget meeting on the 1st or yeah. something else, all right? So just be aware that the 1st may still be on your, on your calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, because of the timing of having to have the budget hearing, warrant closed, recommendations. All right. Okay, town administrator's report. Mr. Gillibert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A number of things to note. First, the town will host its first non-civil service police patrol officer examination on Saturday, May 6th at the high school. Detailed information can be found online um, at uh, www.policeexamsolutions.com slash 
nrpd-exam. That's the website for our third party uh, testing company that was selected to administer the test. And uh, qualifications information is available on that site as well. The second is a follow up to the board's discussion. The library director, public works director, building superintendent, and I met to review the status of the library elevator. I attached a service history. We believe we have addressed the processor and muffler issues. However, we are in the process of identifying a fire alarm service firm to address the issue of communication between the elevator and the fire alarm system, which is now believed to be causing the current functionality issues. And I want to recognize Captain Nash for his assistance with regard to this on the interim basis and addressing the issues as, as they've come up. Hopefully we can address them for the long term. I'm pleased to report that the renovation of Room 10 is nearly complete. Human Resources occupied its new space as of March 29th, and new services was scheduled to occupy on March 30th. There's some movement that will take the need to take place with regard to youth services, um, but uh, the space will be available to them this week. Renovations will begin at the old Human Resources Office space, which will house the Veterans Service Office. I want to thank Julie Spurnight for her efforts to move these projects along as quickly as possible. Fourth, Representative Jones' office has advised me that the town's projected FY 2018 Chapter 90 road construction allocation is $508,338.27. This amount is consistent with our capital planning forecast, which calls for a total appropriation of $800 plus thousand dollars for road improvements, including $300,000 of town funds, uh, if recommended by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Fifth. The Youth Services Director provided me an attached report relative to federal funding for the Office of National Drug Control Policy, which funds our Drug Free Communities grant. We'll continue to monitor the federal budget and any potential impact it might have on this grant. Six, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council has awarded an efficiency and regionalization grant for an online street opening permit project that includes North Reading. We believe this grant will allow us to more affordably improve service delivery to residents and utility companies by enhancing customer customer experience and making permitting more accessible. I want to thank the Public Works Director and the Town Engineer for their efforts. A detailed description of the program um, is uh, attached to my report. Seventh, the kickoff meeting for the Concord Street Sewer Study Project, which is funded by the State Community Compact, was held on March 29th. Uh, Selectman Prisco and I and members of the Public Works Department as well as our consultant will be meeting with the MWRA tomorrow to review data. The project is scheduled to be completed by June 30th and a copy of the meeting agenda from last week was attached to my report. Eighth, Selectman Masseri and Prisco uh, and I along with Public Works Director Andrew Lafferty, Water Superintendent Mark Clark and Consultant Rob Williams from Wright Pierce met with representatives of the Town of Andover regarding potable water supply on March 30th last week. The representatives again asserted that Andover can provide North Reading all of its water needs under advantageous terms. We requested that Andover formalize the terms and conditions of such an arrangement for our review, and we advised them of the many concerns North Reading has. These concerns include the length of an agreement, water supply costs, having a seat at the table during rate setting, the long-term viability of the Merrimack River as a water supply, costs to construct the required infrastructure in Andover, the long-term maximum capacity that could be afforded to North Reading, and a timeline for implementation. We're scheduled to meet with Andover again on April 14th to hear their response and work on the MWRA project continues on the initially established schedule. Ninth, as of March 30th, Public Works crews were out for 31 events. Friday and Saturday's event will be the 32nd event. Um, I'll just summarize that we were basically at our uh, budget and our allowance uh, for uh, overage at $424,000. We've now exceeded that based on the, the storm that took place over the, uh, over the uh, uh, weekend. And that concludes my report. Uh, excuse me. I have additional information. I'm sorry. Bear with me. First, uh, or, or in tenth, I should say, I'll note that um, the school department uh, is looking at potentially installing a uh, removable fence in the outfield of the baseball field in the center of town. This would require review and approval by the Historic District Commission. Um, they, uh, the, the school department will be requesting that review or has requested that review or if they haven't requested they're in the process of doing so with a goal of, uh, if approved, trying to install uh, this removable fence uh, later this spring. 
and this is a project of the baseball, uh, the, the, I, as I gather, the baseball program in the school department. Mr. Chair, can I just ask a question on yep. that? A removable fence, portable fence? I mean, what? Uh, it's, it's up there in the game and down. Uh, it would be seasonal in nature, as I understand it. So this would be a uh, an outfield fence, as I understand it. It would be a six foot outfield fence. Uh, the post for which would be permanent in the field, but the fence itself would be able to be removed. The post would be able to be removed from um, the foundation uh, in the field. So it, effectively, it would be set up for the baseball season and then taken down at the end of the baseball season, as and, I understand and, it. Any reason for this? Um, I, I have to defer to uh, the school department with regard to that, but there is some um, baseball-related reason for it. Um, but I have to defer to the school department for that. And I am understanding is there may be an effort underway for fundraising in order to pay for this. Probably through fence. the Diamond Club, but I don't know. Yes. So we're gonna have a green monster. Huh? Uh, it's a six-foot fence, not quite a green <laughs> monster, but. <laughs> And again, I, I'm just noting that it, it's something that's underway. It, it has not been finalized, but there is an extensive planning effort, as I understand it, that's ongoing. And it, again, would require, uh, because half of the field is located in the historic district, um, some review by the, the but, district. But it, so it's through fundraising they want to do this? As or? I understand it, yes. Okay. I haven't heard about it. Right. No, not aware. Well, athletic um, fields and should have athletic fields committee and fences. <laughs> I um, attended the, Mer the, the uh, Mystic Valley Elder Services Legislative Breakfast last week, uh, uh, which uh, Mary Prenny, our senior uh, Elder Affairs Director, was one of the speakers on the agenda, and she had with her uh, Millie, um, I always pronounce her last name wrong, Ch Chaticcio, I believe. Did I, did I say that right? Chaticcio? She, is, uh, she attended, was a guest speaker. She did a, a little uh, coffee table discussion with um, the executive director, Dan O'Leary, which I think everyone found very informative um, uh, on Tuesday of last week. And then uh, finally, uh, with the approval in town meeting of the appropriation for designer services for the Arthur Kenny Field, um, and as a result of the comments made at town meeting, I've been working with Representative Jones to see if we can obtain an indication uh, an informal commitment which would ultimately become a formal commitment from the state plumbing and gas fitting board to reduce the number of fixtures required for the bathroom facilities at that field and right now the targeted number would be five uh, fixtures in each of the men's and women's room and that's something representative jones office is uh, is uh, in discussions with the state plumbing board on um, it would require a formal approval um, the idea, in the, in, as I understand it, would be to potentially reduce the, uh, the cost of the building itself um, to be constructed there. Um, the second uh, item, uh, which I, I know has been discussed and will be discussed further at the Athletic Facilities Committee meeting tomorrow night, is the structure of the uh, bid as it goes out. Um, we are looking at an alternative that may be available to us uh, at uh, minimal or perhaps no additional cost to uh, seek bids for construction of the bathrooms as well as construction of the bathrooms with a slab for potential future construction of a concession stand and then potentially depending upon um, the extent of, of the design the ability to secure quote uh, bids for uh, a complete facility so that the town would have all of the information in terms of the cost the complete facility including a concession stand uh, when requesting funding at the June Town meeting. Um, it's something that uh, will be discussed at tomorrow night's Athletic Facilities Committee meeting and uh, is partially driven by the comments that were made at the, uh, at the March Town meeting. Um, and I believe that concludes my re report. Thank you. Steele? Yeah, uh, uh, so the, with regard to the bathrooms, mm -hmm. the, the addition of the slab uh, and the concession stand would in essence be within the fifty thousand uh, dollar allocation is that yeah, what I'm understanding yes uh, the, the designer has indicated to me that they would recommend for purposes of again pressuring the market to be as competitive as possible uh, that that they, they believe that within that fifty thousand dollars they would be able to uh, provide a um, a bid package that would allow us to gauge an actual cost, a bid, 
to construct a complete facility. It doesn't obligate us to construct it, right. but no, it would I give us the information. And, 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 and it, it would. doesn't give you a number either of the total construction either. It will. Yeah, it, it would. would. Oh, it would. Okay. It would. Okay. Okay. No, it, it would. It would give us that idea. Okay. Okay. By having the adult and two adults, right. slab, slab with the slab with, with, and with, with the okay. concession. So it's to be in three parts. In exactly. In three, okay. Okay. That's exactly and, correct. And uh, they're looking at the bathrooms being down to five per sex, yes. I presume. And, it would be um, in the men's room. It would be three urinals and two toilets. Oh, I see. I see. So it's okay. five, five it's one room, each. two rooms. Okay, gotcha. And two and, sinks. And the the um, uh, what are the numbers now as far as uh, those haven't changed. What? No, no. The the numbers. Are, uh, how many the fixture count? In the bathroom. What's the what's thirteen? The, uh, so uh, it, it, uh, yeah. 13 total, 13, 8 13. in the women's and 5 in the men's. 5 in the men's. Yes. So, so we'd be reducing the women's to, to 5. To 5. Yeah, there was a discussion about potentially reducing the men's to a total of 3, but I think the feeling was that uh, on the high occupancy days that that would be a, an overtaxed facility at that number. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Magapelli? Okay. The reduction requires another variance? It would, yes. So, so we'd be bidding it contingent. Is that part contingent. of the cost? factor associated with this? Um, yeah, I'm not sure I follow. The, the cost of obtaining the variance, you go to the, the uh, board to get the variance. And we manage the variance all in-house. We basically using oh, our own okay. staff time last time. Um, okay. There is a cost associated with DEP for connecting to the wastewater facility. That's something that's carried in the estimate that we, we have at this point from them, which is within the $50,000 um, approved at, at the March town meeting. And then who's the designer? And this is supposed to be from soup to nuts, so from design specs to bid, and, and so that we're not spending 50000 That's what, what we just did, went through this whole process. But who's the designer that we use? And we're not using the same. We are. Yeah, we are. CBI. The same designer that we already paid the money to to give us all those different. We went through designer selection and identified this firm. We haven't gone through another designer oh. selection to find an additional. Firm. The timelines would not necessarily allow us to do that either. No. No. Who no. is the designer that we're using? Uh, CBI, CBI consultants uh, so out of Dorchester. The same one. Yes. 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 But at least we'll have a, uh, a pretty total picture as to the number. The number or numbers. Number or numbers. Um, three phase or all of ours. With no obligation. Two to any of the of those and the benefit of rather than relying on cost estimates which is normally how we would procure or, or, or seek an appropriation for funding we'll actually have the bid number in hand at the June town meeting yep. numbers. Uh, assuming for argument's sake that I mean, right now uh, the bid is 652 right? cost estimate cost, cost, cost estimate. estimate okay I'm sorry be correct so the cost estimate is 652 all right We've allocated funds, 400,000 plus what I think 250 for the uh, the, uh, um, for the CI uh, capital improvement planning committee. I think there's another 250 allocated there. I think we've discussed that as an option. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's in. I wouldn't say that there. it's in the mix yet, and I wouldn't say that it's necessarily. Well, I, don't know how to, I prioritize. Yeah, it, 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 it did pretty well on the rating yeah. system. So. Um, mm -hmm. So it's almost the same bet, but um, uh, so so you basically technically have the funds to do the bathrooms option E. I believe it was option E. So you basically have the funds for that. We would uh, hope so. I, I would say subject to it, whatever the final bids are. Yes. Right. Right. I mean. It, Assuming it won't be higher than, than the estimated 652, assuming that, just, just for argument's sake. If, the, if you add the slab and the concession stand to this, then obviously it's going to be a, a much bigger number. Have you given any consideration? If you're even thinking about it, you must have given some consideration. How the heck are we going to do this? You know? So how, are you, how would how would you cover, assuming it's 
I, I would say this. From my conversation with the designer, I look at it a bit differently, uh, which is that for uh, nominal, perhaps n no additional cost, but certainly for a cost within the budget we have for this phase of design, we have the opportunity to know what the construction contract would cost for any scenario, for any of those three scenarios right. that I just described. Um, the concern that, uh, that the designer expressed to me and that I now have is we've had this discussion. We don't, we don't know what the bids actually will be until we open them. And on the you know, potential chance that the cost estimates were just high, because they were done so conservatively, those costs, the actual bids could be lower than those numbers. Well, At which point I, I would kind of feel that we get caught in the same trap we've kind of been in all along, which is we're going based on cost estimates, but we don't have the actual numbers. Versus now, we have the opportunity for the actual number with not a whole lot lost in terms of the effort at this point. The designers, again, this was input to me, where he said, I, I don't know why you wouldn't bid it out that way. It's not going to be substantially different in terms of the effort. You're already going to the market. Um, it gives us the opportunity to, um, to know the cost. Whether we should do option two or option three or even option one, that's a different discussion. But at least we'll know the actual cost. No, no, I understand. So, so you're going to get the actual cost in CBI. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you're going to have the actual cost. And, and I have to assume that with the slab and the concession stand, it's going to cost more than the current estimated price of 652 I would, I'd have to make that assumption, even if I'm wrong. Okay? So you now have to think, based what money has been put aside, you now have to answer the question is, okay, if it's more, how are we going to cover the more? How are we going to do that? I think the, the premise that the 652 is the number is the thing I, I'm kind of disagreeing with because it's a cost to well, Give me a number. Uh, I will after we I open the bids. They didn't really <laughs> know. That's the whole thing. They didn't really we know when really they gave us started. that 652 that that was what it was going to be. I think once we open the bids, we'll have to decide how much we want to spend. Yeah. Yeah. We want to spend yeah. it on. And then how we're going to finance it, uh, Why, we'll yeah. get through it. Why are we you know, spend whether any time we uh, you know, do something outside of the regular. Uh, capital plan like we did with the little school roof or something else. I'll, I'll answer your question why I'm spending time on it now because I look ahead, I look forward, and I try to anticipate what's in front of me, all right? And I have numbers to work with. You whether don't. They're estimates we don't or not. I, they're estimates or not. They're numbers put by the same right. company so that's going to put the new numbers. So yeah. I'm just trying anyway, to anticipate just that. As far as, as, far as, as, far as the, the debate, this is more informative as to what, what's, what's transpiring. Uh, the Athletic Facility Subcommittee meeting tomorrow night will be making a recommendation uh, to the administration and the board as to and, and the administrator what to put out to bid. They, they get the, the suggestion is, uh, will be, and I'd be surprised if, if the recommendation is not to recommend and include the two add options yeah. to see what the whole price would be. Of what course, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. that okay, so we're in favor that, of that. That's not my good. I think we're good. Yeah. And then we'll just wait and see what happens. Yeah. I think they're not giving the numbers out. They're just giving yeah. the design to be yeah. bid right. and get right. numbers back. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not going to yeah. put any more right. cost estimates on yeah. there. They're just putting bid documents <laughs> together to get exactly. what the marketplace is going to be. The numbers are the so there will be no more, there will no be, be no, no more no guessing. guessing. No so more guessing. what's the deadline for them to do that information? There's a timeline on that is... Uh, so we expect that the bids will be due the second week of May. So we could have them for the meeting, so we would know what to do on the meeting. So, uh, uh, but anyway, just to inform the board, you know, it would appear as though the bid package will include the two adults. Is there any opposition to that? How's no, that? no, I agree with Mr. Yule. I mean, you blinked and turned around, and the numbers were kept right. creeping up. So, so no, are I we okay with putting I the bid out for that? Know. Those specifications. One, yeah, two, and three. Definitely. That's what we paid the money for. One, two, right. and three. Yeah. Well, you're getting it all for the same price, so right. why right. not? I mean, right. I don't have a problem with that. If, it, if, 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 if the question was that, well, for another $15,000, we can include an estimate on this, I would say no. No, we're not. That's not the case. That's not the case. That's not the case. He didn't so, say it. So we're good. 15, 20 minutes ago, he didn't say it. All right. Terrific. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. No. No? no. <laughs> All right. All the new business. Mrs. is Betty Pell. No, I'm good. Thank you. Right. Oh, Yule. just oh. wishing Mr. Just wishing Mr. Yes. Mosseri speedy recovery, though. Yes, absolutely. Glad everything went well. And <coughs> yes, people to keep him in there. 
keep them in their prayers so we recuperate. So. Mr. Ewell. Yeah, uh, I think that's the, the only thing for me to talk about is that, that Bob gets better quickly and that it's, as I told him, that it's a successful operation uh, and that uh, uh, his quality of life uh, uh, gets as close to normal as we in that age bracket can get. <laughs> Mr. Prisco. Just want to just add a little something to the town administrator's report. You want to thank the Commonwealth for granting us the community compact money to allow us to hire Wright Pierce as our consultant to assist us with the Concord Street sewer project uh, study or research that we're going through. Um, so that community compact continues to pay dividends for us. So uh, very appreciative of that opportunity. And I want to thank MWRA. They've been very responsive to us and I'm hoping that our next meeting will have a very good report. And if we have an opportunity if we're going to extend now, we'll extend the meeting to eight, May 8th. We will put together something, at least a, a white paper from that meeting, since it will be a few weeks now. So the board has an idea of what comes out of that meeting. And I will take the responsibility to pull that together. <coughs> Exciting times. All set? That's it. Okay, you know, the only thing I have to add in relation to the um, Athletic Facility Subcommittee uh, is that you know this is a follow through with what we made a commitment to town meeting to do, which is to go out, get the bids, and find out what the real price is going to be. And I uh, want to acknowledge uh, the administration's and uh, Representative Jones' efforts. Uh, we made a commitment to go back to the state and take a look at the uh, have them ask us ask them to take a look at the facility if they can reduce it. Uh, we appear to be getting a favorable response, and again, I want to acknowledge Representative Jones' efforts in that and the. Uh, State board for they're willing to consider it. Uh, and again, oh, uh, just to echo my colleagues' uh, comments, uh, just wish Bob a speedy recovery and get back here. As far as I'm concerned, chairman for life. And, uh, What's his recovery his, time? Uh, under Bob's schedule or the doctor's? <laughs> no, no uh, Bob's schedule is uh, he'll be here, to, you know, yeah. next meeting. Uh, but he's hopeful that uh, you know, he told him to lay low for four to six weeks, but Bob won't lay low in four to six weeks. Right. Uh, I guarantee you that. Yeah. Which is but uh, good news. Hopefully, it continues to be good news for him, and uh, we wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, with that, we do have a brief executive session. Ten minutes. Let's keep it brief. Mo motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> to executive session. Madam Mr. Executive Chairman, session. I move to end to exe oh, into executive session for the purposes of discussing Exemption Three litigation and collective bargaining strategy. Such discussions in open session will have a detrimental impact on the town and to admit the following, there's nobody to be admitted, uh, and further that the Board of Selectmen will return. Liz, you're staying, right? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Rock, sorry. I didn't realize you were gonna be here. I guess you would have left a long time ago if you could. <laughs> um, and further, the Board of Selectmen will return to open session for the sole purpose of Can adjournment. I go? Uh, second. We have a second, uh, roll call vote. Mr. Prisco. Aye. Mrs. Manupelli. Aye. Mr. Ewell. Aye. And the chair votes aye.